Hello everybody and welcome to, I believe it's already the 8th edition of Jan's Opening Clinic. The format is, you're a premium member on Chess24, you ask me an opening related question, chess opening that is, in the news article that we publish normally a day before or so, and I will do my best to answer all your questions in this very show. Gotta warn you today, I didn't sleep very well, so if my answers are even more condescending or begrudging than normally. Don't forget, it, there, there are no stupid questions, there's only stupid answers and I'm planning to give plenty of those today. Let me try if I can figure out how to bring up the first question. Let's see, this is all a mess already. Here we go, first question. First question, by the way, is can you guys hear me? I'll try to check that out in the chat before we proceed because you never know with the audio, it's still a big mystery to me. So if you can, please let me know. Say you who we can see you, we can hear you and all that stuff. F5 did work, I'm not sure what that means. Can you hear me? Can't you hear me? Maybe they can't, that'd be sad. Abraham Payton says yes. All right, here we go then. So first question by Adam657 is, Hey Jan, can you recommend to me what to play against a Karokan? I I want something aggressive if you can. Thanks. This feels like Groundhog Day already. I can't speak yet, that also feels like Groundhog Day. But I do believe that I've had a very similar question in a couple of shows. So if you've missed the old shows, they are all on the Chess24 website in the show, chat <laughs> show section or on YouTube, feel free to check those out as well. But of course, I will do my very best to once again recommend something against the Caro Can. Let's see if I can do that, no pun intended. Intended, I really don't speak. E4, C6, this is a pretty solid line. I've, I never play E4, so I'm not gonna claim. I'm a huge specialist, one system I like is the Two Knights, I believe that's what they call it, which was recommended and played by my friend Paco Vallejo. One big point is that after the standard move bishop g4 here, white goes h3 and the move that black would like to play, bishop h5, is not very good because white can get very aggressive with something like takes, takes, bishop b5, check, knight c6, g4, bishop g6, knight e5, and this tends to be good for white. So what they normally do instead is they take on f3, and after queen f3, as a friend of the two bishops, I have a very hard time believing that black is fully equal here. Let's say knight f6, d4, there's plenty of other moves except for d4, but d4 is not bad. e6, bishop d3, and these lines, I think white has a little something. I think they're very playable. So that's what I'd be looking into. If you're looking for other ideas, I'm sure I've recommended other lines in the older show, so please go back and check those. Thanks for your question, Mr. Adam657. I will bring up the next question. There's always a bit of an awkward pause in between those because I'm switching from the little tool I'm using to show you the moves to the website and I am clumsily trying to fill these breaks. Chessfan123 is asking, Moin Jan, what do you suggest to play against the Dutch Leningrader variation? Seems to be a German guy. D4, F5, C4, Knight F6, Knight C3, G6, Knight F3, Bishop G7, G3, Castles, Bishop G2, D6, Castles, C6. Is there a reliable way to keep an opening advantage? In case of B3, Queen A5, it seems to me that black can reach a very comfortable position. I don't agree with that and I will hopefully be able to show you why or maybe not. So the Leningrad Dutch, it's an opening I've faced plenty, I've won almost all my games. Not quite sure why, it's not a bad opening, but somehow it seems to suit me. I've always said that I have a hard time believing that one f5 can be a good move for black, weakening his position so early. And c6 is a bit of a trendy line played by many strong players out there. You said that after b3, which is a good move, I've played this myself, I've also played many other moves. Rook to b1 I think is also a good move. Well, you said after b3, queen a5, you think black reach is a very good position. And I disagree with that. Point is after bishop b2, the idea of queen a5 is to go e5 now and the queen covers this pawn. But here white has a very strong move, there's a move you have to know, it's the move queen to d2. 
The idea of queen d2 is that if black decides to go e4, white would take it and win a pawn because of some tactics. So queen d2 is directed against e4. Without e4, black doesn't really have a sensible break and white would just continue with rook a d1. So what black normally does is to retreat here voluntarily with queen c7. But now I do believe that white can go for another standard recipe in these positions if after black played e5, which is d, e, d, e, and now to play e4. And this position, in my opinion, favors white. I've checked this a bit, rook d8, you just go somewhere with a queen, e2 or c2, and it's unpleasant. Black is not really in time to play f4, which is the move he normally wants to play, because white just ignores it, goes rook a, d1, takes over the d file, and I do believe this is a good position for white, and white has scored well from here. So I do think that b3 is a perfectly good move against most Leningrad systems actually, including this one. Another very good move, as I said, is rook b1, intending to play b4, study the games of Kramnik here after knight e4, queen c2. I think white also keeps some pressure, or after knight to a6, b4. So overall, yeah, I think there's plenty good moves. I tend to switch them around to not become too predictable, but b3 and rook b1 are certainly two of them. And yeah, I always like seeing the Leningrad. Time for the very awkward transition again, which maybe I should something else then. Very awkward transition every time I do it. But as I said, I didn't sleep well. I watched Mission Impossible last night and didn't give me nightmares, but the plot just made so little sense that it annoyed me a bit. It's a good action movie, but I didn't. I had high expectations. I had like 93% on Rotten Tomatoes. I thought it was going to be really good, but I didn't have that much fun. Let's see if SK3 is going to have a lot of fun. He's asking, hey Jan, I have a question about dealing the center in the opening. When to keep the tension and when to release it? Like Queen's Gambit decline, have two line, one is keep and another really and other release it. Thanks for your answer. Hope you have a good day. Yeah, these are the questions which I have a very hard time answering. Because first of all, there are no rules when to release the center or when to keep the tension in the center, at least there are no rules that I'm aware of that would apply all the time. I'm not quite sure which line you mean in the Queen's Gambit decline, but there's so many subtleties it's really hard to answer. For example, here cd5 is not considered to be a good move, then you go knight c3, knight f6, and now all of a sudden cd5 is one of the main moves. It always depends on a lot of very, very small details. In this case, it would be after c, d, e, d, knight c3 here. Black wouldn't go knight f6, but would go c6, and why is not on time yet to pin him. But sorry, there's no rule of thumb when to keep the tension and when to release the tension. Keep it if you're not losing a pawn, and if you always have the option of releasing it later, I guess it's something one could say, or one could not say it. I'm not quite sure. Sorry, SK3, chess, concrete game. No rules of thumb when to <laughs> thumb. The B is silent, like in Django, where the D is silent. No rule of thumb when to keep the tension, when to release it, at least I don't know it. Next question. All-Star. All-Star is wondering, Hi Jan, in the advanced Karakan with 3c5, do you think that after 4d takes c5, either e6 or knight c6 represent the best chance for equality for black? Obviously, this line is much less explored than bishop f5, so where do you think the areas are that black should be investigating further? Thanks. Now, this is a topic I know a little something about. <clears throat> 1, e4, c6, d4, d5. Let me try to move a bit into the center of the frame. The screen, in case you wondered, I'm not doing this blindfolded, is to my right, so I have a tendency to lean towards it. But I'll try to centralize a bit, because control of the center is important in chess as well. Just gotta know when to release the tension, but I'm not gonna tell you. So e5, c5, this is a sideline, but a respected sideline. First point is, since you asked about dc, if here knight c6 or e6, dc is not the only move. Nowadays knight f3 is very, very fashionable. And you have to be ready for this, because here e6 doesn't make any sense, and why would just go c3, for example, and you get a French, French advance variation, a tempo down. So you have to know your stuff here after bishop g4 or knight to c6. These lines are extremely dangerous for black. 
So, after D takes C5, my opinion is that Knight C6 is a better move here. E6, even if White played the simple Knight F3, I think White is a decent version of some strange French line. And nowadays the popular move is a move A3, which I think is quite a good move. The point is after Bishop C5 you go Queen G4, which is unpleasant. So they tend to start with Knight C6, Knight F3, Bishop C5, B4, say Bishop B6. Bishop b2, and I quite like white's chances in this position. If white manages to solidify this e5 pawn and then proceed with development, I think it tends to be better in such structures. So I do think that knight to c6 is a better move. Do I think it equalizes? I don't know. It's, it's dangerous for black. You really have to know your stuff here. One line which I always thought was a good try was knight f3, bishop g4, c3. Strange looking move, but I think it makes a lot of sense. And this is quite dangerous for black. The main point is you can't take yet because of bishop b5 winning a lot of material. So instead they have tried all kinds of things. Grishog recently played a6, which is probably the best move to stop any bishop b5 shenanigans. But if it equalizes, I'm not so sure. Still, if you put a gun to my hat and ask me e6 or knight c6, I would play knight c6 all day long after d takes c5. Hope that helped. Am I yelling, by the way? I have a feeling I'm yelling. Does the sound too loud, too robotic, not loud enough? Let me know. I get so inspired by our Spanish banter blitzer, Jose Cuenca, who's always like commentating chess like football, and he keeps a tremendously high volume throughout his shows. I won't be able to do that, but I have a feeling I'm loud. Next question. Audremer. Where's Audremer from? I'm just curious. He's from Germany, okay. Hey Jan, I'm looking for interesting answers against one knight f3. You've come to the wrong place. Boring answers, I'd be all over it. At the Gashimov Memorial, Vashila Graf has played knight f3, knight f6, g3, b5 against Carlsen. Although he lost the game, it looks like an interesting line. What do you think about this line and which could be the drawbacks of it? Thanks. Let's have a look once again. Clumsy transition, here we go. So, knight to f3, excellent move. I like playing this move. Knight to f6, g3 and b5. First point is, since you said you're looking for interesting answers to knight f3, g3 is by no means the main move here. Most people that go like one knight f3, like myself, will play c4 in this position when you won't be able to get in b5 well, if you start with b5, then why it's just much better after e4, so don't do that. But back on topic, after knight f3, knight f6, g3, I think b5 is a playable move. It's not a bad move. Some very serious players have played it, Bashir Lagrav, Leiko, and so on and so forth. It's quite logical to black gains a bit of space on the queen side and prepares to put his bishop on b7, which is a good way to neutralize his bishop on g2. And yeah, there's nothing particularly wrong with it. What Carlson played was interesting, this knight a3 stuff, but I think black should be more or less okay after the game was something like this. And here I think black could have gone e6 or even e5 according to Mr. Computer with some complicated positions coming up. What most people do is they play a bit more quietly. They play e castles, e6, d3, now c5 let's say, e4. You get a position like this, d6, a4, where arguably white is a little bit better because maybe black wouldn't have gone for bishop to b7 and e6 so early, but it's a fully playable complex position. So there's nothing particularly wrong with 2b5 according to my knowledge and yeah, by all means give it a shot if someone plays knight f3 and g3, which yeah, I'm just warning you, it's not gonna help you against 2c4, which is much more popular than g3. But yeah, playable system for sure to b5. Generally, if this guy MVL does it, it tends to be playable. He's not. He's a good theoretician and he's not bluffing all that much. Next question is by Mr. Mario Weissenberger. Mario Weissenberger says, Hey Jan, what do you recommend for black against e4, e6, queen, e2? I don't feel comfortable with neither the c5 d6 setup for black nor with 2 e5 as a French player. Could you recommend some ideas about 2 bishop e7 and 2 d5? I'm not sure if it means 2 d5 or 3 d5. 
both favored by the computer and also played at Grandmaster level. Thanks a lot. Let's don't thank me yet. Let's see what I can do. So one e4. That's a pretty good move. E6. Queen to e2. That's not such a good move. Better is d4 occupying the center. But queen e2. It. The idea is that after d5, white wants to go e d and stop black from going for his standard reply. E takes d5. Computer is happy to sacrifice a pawn here with knight f6. Not so sure about that, frankly, but it could be interesting to investigate further. Something like this, followed by d e bishop e6. I'm not really sure I'm buying it. It doesn't look like full compensation to me, but it could be an idea. Well, the two moves I would play, you've already mentioned you don't like, c5 or e5. So let's focus on bishop to e7 here. That's a decently good move as well, as far as I know. If d4, d5, the white queen would look pretty silly on e2. So what white players normally do is they play more quietly with something like knight f3, d5, d3. Then they want to follow up with g3 and get some sort of king's Indian attack, which leads to complicated, unbalanced positions playable for both sides. Something like this. Knight to c6. White normally goes e5 here, knight d7. And now he tends to... Tr try to build up a kingside attack with like plans like h4, bishop f4, knight d2, rook e1, knight h2, some long maneuvering standard plans. But if white goes h4 here, I think black is quite fast generating counterplay with b5. So what they do is they play this move c4, trying to stop that, and you get a very complicated position. I'm not sure who's better and why. Kayakin recently played d4 and then f5 next move, one against Swidler in a very complicated game. Another possible plan should be something like a6, intending b5. So that's what you would get if you had the unlikely scenario that you're facing a strong player who does like the move to queen e2 and you play bishop e7. It's possible. I would prefer c5, as I said, followed by knight c6, g6, but I do understand that's not your cup of tea. So I would go bishop e7, and if you're more adventurously inclined, have a look at this stuff. I'm not fully buying it, but it could be some compensation. That's all I got on queen e2. What does Tim Dot Stemla have to say? He says, Hi Jan, what do you recommend for black in the exchange variation of the Rui Lopez? Thanks. I keep changing my mind. I believe there's a bunch of very playable systems and I tend to choose them according to mood and tournament situation and strength of the opponent. Am I okay with a solid position with likeliness of a draw or do I need something sharper? I believe there's a bunch of reliable systems here. The objectively best if we're looking for sort of clear-cut equality. I think it's bishop g4, h3 and h5. This is, well, a long line that looks crazy if you see it for the first time, but that's how it normally goes. I won't go through the details here, but this is the line they play on top level. And once the dusk settles, you get this position, which I think is pretty equal and actually very playable for black. So I'm not very concerned about that. Another interesting move is bishop e3 when normally you get this end game. Bishop d6, which is also kind of equal. So that's, I believe, the most reliable way when you're looking for a theoretical discussion which should end in equality. I, yeah, I keep changing my lines. We have a question later about bishop g4, h3, bishop h5. That's sort of a dangerous gambit after g4, bishop g6. We'll look at it then, which I've played twice. And another move I like is the move queen to f6, which leads to more solid positional play. d4 takes bishop g5, queen to d6 is the main line here. And I think black equalizes there as well. So that's probably the lines I would choose between. I've also played knight to e7 here, which is another invitation for sharp play after knight e5, queen d4. I believe all of those systems are playable. Objectively, I think bishop g4 followed by h5 is the most reliable. 
But I might change my opinion in the next show. So you never know. For now, that's what I think. Heron Liang is asking, Hi Jan, what are your thoughts on the Bogo Indian Queen E7 variation? Keep up the good work at Chess24. What are my thoughts? Do I have a lot of thoughts on that one? Don't have that many thoughts, but it is a line I did play in my childhood. Or, well, not really my childhood, when I was like 16. I've played this stuff quite a bit, bishop b4 check. Most dangerous and trendy move nowadays is knight bd2. For some reason they've moved a bit away from bishop d2, mainly because black has too many options, I think. c5, a5, queen e7, bishop takes d2 are all playable, and it's a bit too much of a hustle to... Hustle, hassle to keep up with all of them from White's point of view. Anyway, by queen e7, I'm guessing you do mean this variation. And g3, knight to c6, that's normally the point. The idea is after bishop g2, you take here, and White can't take with a queen because of knight to e4. Queen goes somewhere, queen b4 check, and White either loses the right to castle or loses a pawn, or ruins his pawn structure. If you don't believe me, check that for yourself. The main move instead of bishop g2 is supposed to be knight c3. And last time I checked, white was supposed to be a bit better here. So that's my opinion. I wouldn't play it with black, but I'm not very up to date. This, this stuff, or at least in the old days, this used to be how they played. Normally, you got a position like this, and here black chooses between knight d8 and knight b8. I always thought knight d8 was the main line, castles, e5. Here white seems to be quite fast if he doesn't waste any time and goes for c5 directly. Still an unbalanced position and I'm not sure it's bad for black, but I do believe that theory currently considers this to be a little unpleasant. So I'm sorry, I'm not fully up to date on the queen e7, queens, no, bogo Indian. I probably would not play it, but I don't think it's a bad opening and there might be developments out there that I'm not familiar with. I hope that helps a bit at the moment. Yeah, I think this stuff is supposed to be a bit better for white, but I could have missed out on something. It does happen. Not often. Let's take a brief look at the chat if anybody's awake watching, if there's complaints to uh, mess up the screen. I won't be answering questions that are posed on the thread in the chat because frankly I have my hands full answering the more than 50 questions that were posted in the news article. So if you want your question answered, post them in the news article we publish about these shows. I believe it's the first entry in the chat as well. And the sooner you post them, the better of a chance you have to get them answered because I do prefer, prepare for those things a little bit in the morning and during the day. And I might not be able to get to the questions that were posed very, very late. So enough. Blah blah, next question. BT45JA says, Hi Jan, just became premium member. All this Chess24 stuff is amazing. Learning just loads. Thanks until the end of time. Thank you so much. We're glad that people do like Chess24. <clears throat> Share it with a friend. Tell people, spread the word. At my local chess club, I am spanking all my main rivals at Blitz, mainly due to the video stuff I'm analyzing with my chess buddy, who has been a premium member for much longer. That's great to hear. Anyway, here's my question. I'd just like an opinion on the Rui Lopez deferred for black. I don't know what that means, but there are some moves. e4, e5, 2 knight f3, knight f6, I guess you mean knight c6, bishop b5, a6, Bishop a4, d6, and then 5, whatever white does, within reason, I try to play a system with the following moves for black, g6, knight h6, bishop g7, f6, and just do whatever is necessary to support e5. If white gets in d4 and try to take advantage of the pinned knight on c6, I like to allow d5 and play b5 temporarily, giving up a pawn for some play on the b-file. Could you just go over a few of these concepts for me? Thanks, man. Hope I'm not too late. You're not too late, BT458JA. However, I do not like your system. I'll tell you right here, right now. And hopefully I'll be able to explain why. Hmm. So E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, 
bishop b5. You want to go a6, bishop a4, and d6. This is a playable move. It's not the main move, and I much prefer knight to f6 or even knight e7. But d6 is certainly a playable move and has been played by many greats like Magnus Carlsen. Two white, white main moves here are c3 and castles. Let's say I go castles, for example. Now you want to go g6. Now play d4. And if you go bishop g7 here, which seemed to be your plan, you'll never be in time to go knight h6, f6, knight f7, and bolster this e5 pawn, because I'd immediately go for punishment. I don't want to go d5, as you pointed out here, after b5. Black might be alright, but I do simply want to ruin your pawn structure and play something like this. You have to recapture. And this end game, I don't think you'd have a lot of fun. I think white is just better here with all these weaknesses and the bishop a bit passive on g7. So the move order just doesn't work after castles. What you probably have to do if you really want to play the system is either start with bishop d7 or play bishop g4 here, which is a different line. After bishop d7, things aren't so clear. Then there are some lines with d4, b5, which are complicated. And if white goes c3 here, now you can go g6, d4, bishop g7. I personally believe that white is better in this type of position as well, either by going for a good version of the king's indian, like playing something like this, but these positions are playable for black. Slightly worse, but playable. <clears throat> but your move order trying to do without bishop d7, I think you will get punished. Might be slightly better against c3 than against castles. But even here, if black played bishop g7, I believe this is a decent option. Takes and takes here. Well, once again, the end game should favor white. Not as much as after castles, but it should still be a little unpleasant. So trying to do without that is brave. And after bishop d7, let's say castles, bishop g7. Well, white once again has many moves here. d5 followed by c4 is a standard plan. Rook e1 is a move. But even if I played, let's say, rook e1, I think this plan is a little slow. I'm not sure I'm buying it. Here it's more playable. You want to go f6, knight f7. But I, I'm not a big fan. For example, in this position, bishop g5 is one of the main moves played by Vishiana when... White spends a tempo to provoke f6, so to go for this deliberately, I'm not sure is a good idea. So, I'm sorry yet to disappoint you, but I don't think your system works. You have to, if you want to play this d6 stuff, you have to play bishop d7 and be ready to play these sort of king's indian structures after d5 followed by c4, where I think white is a bit better, but those are playable, but you're not gonna get in all the moves you want to. I hope that helped and thanks a lot for liking the website, even though I'm doing my best to curb your enthusiasm. That's a good show, by the way. Next question by K Lamar 74 a regular in these opening clinics. What is he up to today? Oh, some sharp stuff. Hi, Jan. Great shows here on Chess24 and the opening clinic is one of my favorites. Thank you so much. What do you think about the falling position for black after the move b5. This arises from the, what's called the two knights? Anyway, let me just put it on the board and we'll take it from there. <clears throat> e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight to f6. Knight f6, yeah, this is a more combative move than bishop c5. The only drawback is that it allows knight g5 and play becomes very sharp. I alternate between knight f6 and bishop c5, once again, depending on mood, opponent, his repertoire, all those thing things. So knight g5, d5, ed. The main line here is knight to a5, and I think with good reason, but the question K. Lamar asked is, what about b5 here? Is that the question? Yeah, that's the question. It's an interesting move. I won't claim a lot of expertise here, but whenever I hear about a line like that or see it, I tend to check correspondence games because in these super sharp lines that are not played much between humans, correspondence guys tend to be ahead and I've seen that white scores very very well here in correspondence games. 
scores a lot of wins. So that means that objectively, probably, this is trouble. The only good move, funnily enough, is the bishop retreat, bishop to f1, as K. Lamar mentioned. When, yeah, white has a choice, black has a choice between knight to d4 and h6. Both lead to totally crazy positions. Objectively, as I said, I won't claim a lot of expertise, but in correspondence, white has been doing very well here. So I believe objectively, probably white is better, both after knight d4 in this line I just showed, and after, oops, sorry, after h6, when white goes knight takes f7, king f7, d takes c6. But I do think that working on these positions could pay off because those are completely irrational positions. Black is material down, but gets the initiative for it. And if you're facing an opponent who's not super well prepared, most people won't be super well prepared for these lines because knight d b5, knight d4 is not that common. And also even here, if you analyze this, are you sure you analyzed all the moves? So you check bishop c5, queen d5, bishop g4, bishop e6, so for over the board play, I sort of like this for black. And I think it is probably a minefield for white to maneuver. And I wouldn't mind if I had spent the time on checking these lines and found something which I thought was worth it for one game to play it. As I said, objectively, I don't think it would hold up to scrutiny. And in a computer tournament, white would probably do well here. I might be wrong about that, but the correspondence results spoke a clear language. So interesting line, and by all means, play it, investigate it. I think it will give good results in practical play. Scientifically, I'm not sure it's holding up. Rookie number eight, not nah, just rookie eight. He is saying, Hi Jan, what do you think of the following pawn sacrifice in the Italian game? e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, knight f6, d4, bishop d4, knight d4, knight d4, f4, d6, f, e, d, e, bishop g5. Here we see the position. Is there enough compensation for white or even more? First question, maybe. Second question, nope. Let's have a look at why. Good old Italian. People seem very eager to give up material in all these Italian lines, as I can tell from the last two questions. Knight f6, d4. First of all, this is an interesting line, and there was an area where I was sort of concerned about it and tended to avoid it by playing d6 here, which, if this is your only line, it could throw a bit of a spanner on the works, because I think d6 is okay here for black. But still, knight f6, d4, this is an interesting pawn sacrifice. Knight takes, knight takes. Come on, take it. f4, d6, f e, d e, bishop g5. This is the position that was mentioned. And I think black is fine. I think white might have enough compensation, but by no means more than that. Bishop e6 is the old move, which seems to equalize. But it seems that the move queen e7 is the trendy move and Black is doing very well here. After c3, black wants to go knight to e6, use that square for the knight, and he's already a bit better, in my opinion. One key trick being that after bishop f6, you go queen c5 check, and then take this bishop. While white normally plays knight to a3 here, defending this bishop ahead of time. And this is a position where, once again, computers rule, and they came up with the not very standard, but seemingly very strong move. Rook to g8, preparing for bishop f6, when after gf this rook would find a lot of useful work on the g file. And this seems to be a good line for black. I couldn't find anything for white. So yeah, maybe, maybe white can somehow equalize here. King h1, bishop d7 has been played. But I don't think he has more than compensation for the pawn for sure. So it's an interesting surprise weapon once again, but with white I'm normally more reluctant to try those things than with black because you're risking being worse with white if black knows his stuff for no particular reason. Still, it's an interesting line. I do believe it has sort of been solved by this queen e7 and tricky rook g8 move. <laughs> Spills with a couple z's. 
is asking, hey Jan, my question is about the position after d4, d5, c4, c6, knight f3, knight f6, e3, g6, knight c3, bishop g7. Opening books tend to dismiss this as not very good for black, with little or no analysis, but black position, black's position seems quite solid and I never seem to get much with white. Question, can white hope for anything meaningful here? And how would you proceed? Let's have a look. I don't know which opening books say this is not very good for black, but no, I think it's a solid, slightly passive system. I, I'd rather be white than black in these positions, but it certainly can't be refuted. It's still early stages in the game. White is a choice. He has three reasonable moves, h3, bishop d3, and bishop e2. I like the move bishop e2. That's what I normally play. Black castles, white castles. And here black has such a huge choice that depending on your next move, the position could go in many different directions. So it's hard to give a verdict. I will say this, the main line dc, bishop c4, bishop g4, the old main line, I believe this is better for white. If he's precise and goes bishop to e2 back, this is a very important move. h3 is the main line given in the books, that's sort of equal, but bishop e2 is very, very unpleasant. So black should not do that, and most strong players don't do this anymore. Uh, but here black has such a wide choice. e6 is a move transposing to some strange hybrid between the semi-slav and the Grunfeld, or whatever it is, which leads to a playable position. Slightly better for white, as usual, probably. White goes b4 here very quickly, as in many of these systems. b6 is a move recently tried by Mamed Yarov. He was crushed by Carlsen after a4. A6 is always a possible move in these positions. Bishop G4 leads to a slightly worse but player position. Bishop E6 has been tried. Knight BD7 has been tried. And so on and so forth. You catch my drift. White has to be slightly better. He has more central control. And the bishop on G7 in combination with C6 tends to be a bit passive. But it's certainly a playable position which many black players will play if they are not looking for a theoretical fight, they don't mind being slightly worse and taking it from there. Kamski's played this, and many strong players have played this with black. It's hard to analyze till the end because, yeah, b6, a6, e6, bishop e6, bishop g4, queen b6, knight bd7, tc4. There's too many options. I do believe white is slightly better in all of them. If black plays slowly, try to gain space on the queen side. If he plays more quickly with dc, bishop g4, you have to know a bit more, but those tend to favor white. But yeah, it is a play playable system and it won't be refuted. Maybe it will be. No. Leo Vieira. What's Leo Vieira 86 up to? Hi Jan, what do you have any trusted weapon against the Grunfeld? I have been playing d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5, cd, knight d5, bishop d2 with some mixed results. What do you think of this line? Thanks in advance and keep up the good work. Nah, I'm not planning to keep up any good work today. I don't have a trusted weapon against the Grunfeld. In fact, I more often than not try to avoid it by playing 1c4 or 1 knight f3 if I suspect my opponent is a Grunfeld player. The line you've mentioned is a full-fledged mainline. I'm not an expert there, but it is certainly a very respectable line and it has been played at the highest level, including in a World Championship match between Anand and Carlsen. The idea is sound, you want to go e4 and recapture with a bishop on c3, not giving these typical targets and creating weaknesses with bc3 as in the Grunfeld mainlines. I'm not up to date here after knight b6, e3, bishop g7, f4 is all the rage where white has been ha having some success and I believe the theoretical discussions are still ongoing in that line, also in these lines with knight takes c3, bishop c3, then castles and c5 and bishop g7, e4, knight b6, bishop e3, castles. All of those lead to complicated positions where white has chances for an opening advantage, black has chances to neutralize it. But it's certainly a playable line and it will pay off to study this closely. There's a lot of top-level games, steady influx here. So I think it's a decent system. 
I might give it a shot myself, but as I mentioned, I don't have a trusted weapon against the Grunfeld. I normally only allow it if I have a specific idea in one of the many lines, else I quite often go C4 or Knight F3 to not allow it. It's an evil opening, that Grunfeld. And I'm not alone in that belief. At the influx of one C4 and one Knight F3 you see in Super Tournaments these days, I believe the Grunfeld is to be blamed for many of that. Many of those. Next question by... Oh, an international master. I am Petrov Nikita 1996. He's saying, Hi Jan, first of all, thanks for the great open clinic series, especially like the D4 edition. Thank you, you're very welcome. I have a question about the so-called Sokola variation of the Slav defense. It is considered to be playable but passive, mainly because of the line, long line, I'll put it on the board in a minute. However, after Queen b6, f4, there is a rare but very interesting idea, e5. I analyzed it a bit and couldn't find an advantage for white. The question is whether such a way exists or, or is well known. Hope it does not. Well, not according to my knowledge. I'm um, sorry, let's bring up that line. And it's interesting because I have to admit I wasn't very familiar with this move e5. I've seen it played once but I've never analyzed it very deeply for some reason. This line, the Sokolov stuff, is of course playable. The problem in my opinion is that white has too many moves, g3, f3, e3, bishop g5, that all lead to a very playable position without having to do too much work. So it's not asking that many questions, but certainly playable. And the line mentioned, yeah, this is very interesting. Because I also thought that bishop e2 was the move here when after e6, black is a little worse. Queen b6 is the principal move, f4 here, as was played by Aronian. I thought it was supposed to be good for white, but e5 indeed is very interesting. Point is after f takes e, rook d8, black is fine, planning knock, and i takes e5. So the critical move is d takes e, and here, yeah. I don't know much more than this game between Aronian and, I don't know, who was Shaba Balok. Knight c5, bishop e3, queen b2, knight b5, fireworks, which surely Levon did analyze at home. This seems forced, queen b4 check, king f1, and here Balog went for rook c8, which the computer does not like one bit and says after knight d6, white is better. But as I'm sure you've spotted, the computer gives 0, 0 here after rook to d8. And it's very hard to argue with the computer in such positions. However, Levon did go for this with white more than once, and I would expect him that he did have a look at this line, which is a computer line. It's crazy stuff, but that's ha that happens in sharp lines. And thought, even if the computer can defend this, even if it says 0, 0, 0, let people prove it. He has his king in the center. I have a powerful pawn majority. The computer does give 0, 0, and I'm not going to argue with that, but it does look dangerous. So in order to play with black, you would have to be very sure you know what you're doing here, and you checked all the lines. For example, b6, d6, king e6, bishop g4, f5 is given as equality, but it certainly does look scary for both sides, actually. So, no, thanks for that. Um, one second, let me do that. Mm -hmm. Thanks for pointing that out. I hadn't paid enough attention to this move e5, and it does seem to hold up theoretically when it is playable, but yeah, the line I just mentioned does look scary for black at the very least, so one has to check it quite carefully in order to play it, I would guess. Moving on, is the stream still there? I'm saying I'm asking too much of my computer. What's going on? Sound is perfect, that's good news. Ah, I'm like five hours behind in the screen. In the screen, in the stream. Now, looks like it's all good, so let's move on. Next question by Philip Rieke. What's he up to? Hi Jan, I have a problem with the King's Indian. Yeah, don't we all? Can you show me a good playable variation? Maybe something aggressive with h4. Thank you. I like your opening clinic and how you play banter blitz. Chess greetings. What are chess greetings? Um, and I'm gonna have to say no, Philip Rieke. I'm sorry, I don't know a good playable variation with h4. 
Why could he even go h4 on the king's Indian? <clears throat> I don't know. What h4s are there? I think in the, these lines I often play h4. So if you really want to get in your h4, you could try this sneaky knight maneuver, knight 2 knight g3. They normally go e5, you go d5, and then you try to follow up with h4. And, well, let's say a5, h4. h5 is a threat, so typically black goes h5. Then you go bishop g5. And what you're hoping for is that you get in some tricky piece sacrifice on h5. I'm not sure how to construe this. Maybe like this. Here, bishop h5. Here, I believe white is winning already. Takes Knight takes h5. And white has a tremendously strong attack on the king side. Bad news is black normally won't allow that and will play something like queen to e8 to get out of the way. Man, this is a complex playable position, but you did get in your h4. I'm not sure you like it. I'm not a huge fan of this line, I'll be honest with you. But other systems with h4 don't come to mind currently, I'm sorry. <clears throat> and yeah, I do share the problem. It's tough to find a likable line against the king's Indian. Mark1707 is asking Hey Jan, after the moves, d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, knight f6, knight c3, bishop b4, I guess he means knight f3, either on move 3 or 4. C, D, E, D, bishop g5, h6, white has two main moves, bishop h4 and bishop f6. My question is about bishop f6. After queen f6, white plays queen a4 check and black has to play knight c6 and has a problem that his c-pawn is blocked. Now my question is, why doesn't usually, why doesn't white usually play queen a4 on the fifth move? It's the same effect, but doesn't lose the bishop pair. That is true. <laughs> However, first of all, they do that. In this position, bishop b4, queen a4 check, is a main move. Maybe slightly less popular than CDED bishop g5, but certainly a main move that is played often at grandmaster level. Black has to go knight c6, which as you mentioned is not ideal because the knight blocks the black c pawn, and white has indeed not lost the bishop pair. Still here, white has to make a move at, well, he could transpose to the lines you mentioned with CDED bishop g5, h6, bishop f6, they often do that, or he has to incarcerate his own bishop with e3. This is also a playable line, I've played it myself, but after castles it turns out the queen is also not very well placed on a4, that's the price you have to pay for it. And these positions after let's say queen c2 takes here a6 followed by bishop d6 and e5 are supposed to be quite playable for black. So this line is not the height of fashion but it is a playable line. Recently there's been some attempts to make knight e5 work here, bishop d7, knight d7. And yeah, queen a4 check, as you mentioned, is a clever move provoking knight c6. And it is played quite a bit, so I don't think people are not aware of this. Still, yeah, I'm not sure it's better or worse than cd, ed, bishop g5, but it is certainly a playable main line. So I do hope that answers your question. Thanks for pointing it out. Reich is asking, Hi Jan, what's black's best play after against d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3? Long line, let's put it on the board. <laughs> Should he just take on d5? Is knight b4 too bold? Related question, if this is still allowed, do you consider the 6, c5 line to be okay for black? Now, my honest answer is, I do not really know. I don't play the Zamish and I have not spent a lot of time on checking this recently, but I do think people still do it. So more likely than not the answer is yes, this is still okay for black. Because nowadays if you see this line, most of the time you see white going knight to e2 and you get one of these positions when white does not decide to test black in dc, dc. How does it go? Takes, takes. 
knight bishop c5, knight c6, what is it, bishop a3, a5, oh, sorry, I mixed up the move order, didn't I? Now oh, bishop a3, a5, rook d1, this is what they do, bishop e6, knight d5. I don't know, when I checked this, which is a while ago, I thought knight b5 immediately here was supposed to work and give enough compensation. I haven't, yeah, spent a lot of time on it recently, because as I said, I don't play this with either color. But yeah, last time I checked, this was supposed to be fine for black. King h8, knight d5, I believe you give a check here, or you even go b5 immediately. And yeah, feed this position to a strong computer of your choice, and I believe at the end it will come down to equality. So I believe this is supposed to be fine for black, and I believe that, yeah, d takes c5 is not a move they try anymore. I think if white players go for this position now, they play with d5, but more often knight to e2. And that's the line you have to study. So to answer the question, don't take on d5, go knight b4, sacrifice a bunch of pawns, you'll be fine. And I do not consider this to be dangerous for black. I could be wrong, but that's the amount of my knowledge on that line. Bruce Lee 32, that's the age Bruce Lee died as we learned from doing these shows. I do like that Bruce Lee t-shirt that What's his name? Robert Downey Jr. War in the Avengers. I should really get that t-shirt for one of these shows. Let's find out. This one. I think it's a nice t-shirt. That's very pricey. I've already checked. But I think I'll get it. Anyway, moving on. Sorry, Bruce Lee32. Your fault for choosing that username. Um... Hi Jan, I have a question about a sideline in the Banco Gambit. What's, in your opinion, the critical continuation after the following moves? d4, knight f6, c4, c5, d5, b5, queen c2, bc, e4, e6, knight c3, ed, e5, followed by a piece sack from black with bishop b7. Engine. Thanks in advance. Once again, it's not me teaching here, it's me learning stuff, because I think I gave this in a previous opening clinic as an interesting sideline. This move queen to c2, b c, e4, e6, and indeed my idea or theory I thought was knight c3, e takes d4, and e5, which I thought was good for white, but bishop b7 is not a move I was aware of, and you're right, the computer does point this out if you give it some time. After e f queen f6, I don't know what's going on and why it's very irrational position. Black has three pawns for the piece, which normally I would prefer the piece in such a sharp situation with so many piece, pieces still on the board, but these black pawns are pretty powerful. I've checked it a bit, I don't know, it's just a total mess. The computer, if you give it some time, I think wants to go knight h3 here for whatever reason. Knight f3 looks more logical than knight to a6. And the position is just very, very unclear. I believe, yeah, whoever is better prepared here will come out on top. So it wouldn't discourage me from playing this line with white, but I would certainly have to check it a bit more. And I only have to thank you for pointing it out because I wasn't aware of bishop b7. I thought black has to go knight g4 or something. And then white is better after knight d5 if memory serves me well. So yeah, very interesting move, bishop b7. Messy. I'm not sure I'd be ready to play with black, but it's certainly something you have to be aware of, and it leads to total chaos. <laughs> but yeah, I've mentioned this many times as well. I normally don't allow the Banco. Why bother? Just play knight of three or th one knight of three or three knight of three. Banco players tend to be very unhappy if you do that, and they tend to be quite happy if you go for the Banco. But that's more of, yeah, my personal preferences. Speaking of the Benko, Benko friend Flo Power is saying, hey Jan, in your opening clinic six, you talked about a position from Peter Svidler's repertoire after the moves knight f3, knight f6, c4, c5, knight c3, d5, cd, knight d5, e4, knight b4, bishop c4, knight d3, king e2, knight f4, king of one, knight d3, I'll put it on the board in a minute, queen e2, knight c1, rook c1, and came to the conclusion that you like the position for black. However, Dennis Wagner played this position with white in Gibraltar this year as well as in a blitz game against a friend of mine, 
and followed up with e5, e6, h4, knight c6, h5. All very logical moves. And now the position looks difficult for black to play, although the computer likes it. What more do you want? You have a position the computer likes after like 15 moves with black. What more could you hope for? Anyway, let's put it on the board. Some more moves here. What would you do with black? I don't know that much about this line. As I said, I like the position after around 10 moves and if that happens with black, I tend to move on to something that I consider more scary. And how do we get here? Ah, here it is. CD, knight d5, e4, knight b4, bishop c4, knight d3, king e2, knight f4, king f1, knight to d3. The old main move is knight e6, but knight d3 is an interesting move which has become popular. Queen e2 takes, takes a6, which is not forced by the way, but it makes sense to me. e5, e6, h4, knight c6, h5, h6. Yeah, I don't know if h6 is forced, by the way. Knight d4 looks like an interesting move here as well, leading to some very messy positions. h6, rook h3, b5, bishop d3. But honestly, if you have such a position after 50 moves, like black has the two bishops, it's highly complicated, and white has his trumps, of course, as well, with the pawn on e5 and potential play on the king side. But I have a very hard time believing that black is seriously worse here and... I tend to quit analyzing here and I'm an opening nerd so I believe this would be good enough to play. I've checked now for the show I've seen there's been a game between someone, Nepomnesi and Sutovsky where queen b6 was played. If you switch on the computer it's gonna give queen d7 here as well, always with rough equality. And yeah, as you know I'm not a big believer in plans, I more or less more believe in moves here. I'm not sure. Plans are, yeah, don't castle kingside and get checkmated. Castle queenside if it works. Go knight d4 if it works. React to a4 according to circumstances. I don't know. I think you're overthinking this a little bit. If this is your biggest worry, I would be happy with the position after queen b6 or queen d7 or 13 knight to d4. But of course, I always do think that, yeah, checking your openings and analyzing them and trying to figure it out is a good way to improve a chess. So by all means, go ahead. This line, yeah, even though Dennis Wagner beat a much weaker player from this position, I wouldn't be that concerned about it. To answer the second part of the question, hmm. what to do if you're facing a weaker player who wants to repeat moves here after king f1, knight d3, king e2? Well. You go 96. Then you mention that white gets good compensation after b4, which is true, but that's the cruel reality we live in. If you're black and, yeah, you don't want to repeat moves, but continue the game, then you have to live with the situation that white might get a little play as well. And against a weaker player, I'd be very comfortable with the position after knight e6, b4, c takes b4 being a pawn up. If I want to play for a win, I think there's a lot worse starts than being a pawn up and the white king being on f1. That said, white does get very good compensation here after knight e2, but as a winning attempt against a weaker player, I'd be thrilled. And I don't think there's that many weaker players who will study this line and play b4 or study this line in order to make a draw with king e2. So I don't think that scenario is likely. If it is, there's plenty other moves after one knight f3 knight f6, c4, c5, knight c3, g6, e6, knight c6. What I'd be more concerned with if I played this line against a weaker player, by the way, is the move bishop b5 check. I think that's supposed to be more or less an equalizer. I forgot theory here, but I believe this is supposed to be very equalish, something like this. So that would be more of a concern than the other lines. So yeah, I'm not sure if that answered your question, but yeah, if you have an unclear position with black after whatever was 18 moves, then play it. Moving on. <laughs> Le Clou is saying, hi Jan, the Hector Gambit. Is that the Hector Gambit? With bishop g4 and bishop h5 seems to be a good way to make the exchange rule up is a bit more exciting. Could you recommend a setup when white declines the gambit with d3? 
Thanks in advance. Ah, I thought the question was recommend a setup for white with d3, but now that I reread it, I'm guessing you mean what should black do if white declines it with d3. I don't think declining it is critical. I think black has to, white has to accept it if he wants anything. But since many exchange Spanish players, exchange Ruy Lopez players, are looking for a quiet day at the office, I do agree that this move has a lot of practical appeal. I've played it twice. I was a bit unhappy in my second game against Jordi Magem, I think the Spanish Grandmaster. I had the feeling I was worse out of the opening. And it's a dangerous line for both sides, but I do agree. Yeah, it's a very interesting line, especially if it comes as a surprise. So I'm not quite sure where d3 you mean, probably here. But then black, in my opinion, is just fine. You go f6, I would guess, and proceed by getting the pieces out. If you're feeling aggressive, you can follow up with queen d7, long castles, g5. And with this pin luring and white didn't even get material for breaking it up, I believe he's doing very well. Now that I've made queen d7, I just spotted knight takes e5, so don't blunder this tactic. Don't go queen d7. That goes to show how well I am prepared. Start with bishop d6, but this position I'm reasonably sure is fine for black. Go knight to e7, and yeah, you just have this pin for free. Let's say knight d2, knight e7, wherever. That would probably go c3. I'm guessing you can go c5 if you want to. This bishop should ever get chased away. He has a nice home on f7. So the move d3. Now this is the kind of stuff you want white players to play. If you play a sharp line like that, you want them to chicken out and make concessions like d3 when black already has a good position. The critical stuff here is this, yeah, g4, bishop g6, knight e5, queen h4, queen f3, where I'm not so sure what's going on and why it's very, very messy. But yeah, I do like it as a surprise weapon or as a means to play for a win, for sure. So, thanks for the question. Sorry, but after d3, you don't need a lot of detail. You just make natural moves. You play f6. Don't blunder the knight. Take z5 trick. I just blundered, and you'll be fine. <laughs> PL021. Is it PLO or PL0? PL021 probably it says Moin. I have to admit, I've asked the same question before in one of your shows. I'm guessing you were not that excited by my answer, since you ask it again. You answered like, take the pawn and be happy. Maybe you could tell me, nowadays, a way line to face the Sicilian wings gambit as black. E4, C5, B4. Well, my knowledge hasn't changed very much since the last show. I would still think, take the pawn and be happy, but... Just to make you even happier, we'll look at it a bit further. e4, c5, b4, maybe c, b, a3, d5, and so on. But this is just copy-paste from the opening book of my engine. How do you think I'm doing these shows? It's all copy-paste. What will you do if you faced it against an 18-year-old 2200 ELO Norwegian? Is that a popular line in Norway? In a tournament and you want to win? ELO adjusted to your chess powers. Well, I'll answer that right now. If I played a 2200 and I knew that against e4, c5 he would play 2, b4, I would play c5 100% of the time. I would prepare a bit for what to do against it and I'd be very very happy about my chances. So that's the sort of spots you're looking for. If your lower rated opponent plays a dubious gambit with white and he does that all the time, I'll go for that line anytime. If against e4, e5 he plays the king's gambit, I'll play e4, e5 100% of the time. If he plays e4, c5, b4, I'll go there. If he does both, I have a choice, but I think I'll go for the wings gambit. It just looks weird. Um, anyway, enough trashing of the very respectable move 2b4 that does fight for the center. It's probably not... I'm not sure if it's losing or not. It's losing a pawn. But yeah, this line you mentioned, cb, a3, d5. Must be other moves, but d5 does look very principled. E takes D. Here black has a choice. I think knight of six is, yeah, sort of, sort of a modern way to get the pawn back. A, B, knight, D5, whatever. B5, E5, and black is fine at the very least. But the main move is queen takes D5. The idea is A, B, queen, E5, check. And you pick up the rook, so they normally play. What do they do? Knight of three, I think. 
You go e5, grabbing some space in the center. A takes b, bishop takes b4. I think that's what they play. I'm, like I said, not a big specialist because I haven't lost a lot of sleep over it. c3, bishop to d6. This is following the first line of my computer at least. Knight to a3, knight to c6. Knight to c4 or bishop to c4. And black is better after both moves. Let's say bishop c4, check. Bishop e2, knight f6. And yeah, as far as I can tell, we're a pawn up with a good position. So I'd be willing to do that even against the 22 year, no, the, he's 18 years old and 2200 rated, or was it? Yeah, even against that Norwegian, the 18 year old 2200 wing gambit player. Does that guy exist or did you make him up? Um, yeah, I don't know. Knight c4, bishop c5 or bishop c7. These positions, I'm not gonna claim like black is winning or anything and I will admit they're complicated but especially in a scenario when you want to play for a win with black there's nothing more thrilling than seeing an opponent who plays the wings gambit. Still if you're yeah if all of this is too scary b6 is a move that will annoy your gambiteer opponent is also probably playable but I would probably take an after a3 I guess I would go d5 and here either knight f6 or queen takes d5 according to my mood. Now nah, probably I go queen d5, but now that I said it, maybe I'll change to knight f6. And yeah, seriously, you don't worry about these things because everything I've, I know about chess tells me that 2b4 can't be a very good move. And then if you see that someone does it, then I will prepare for it if I think there's a big chance of it happening. But it's something you definitely welcome. And I'm much more concerned about two knight f3 followed by d4 or followed by bishop b5 check or knight c6 bishop b5 than about the wings gambit. So enough trashing it. I'm sure I'm setting myself up to be jinxed in the wing gambit. Please ask me again next time. Maybe I'll have a new opinion. Thanks, PL021. Xenon 1840 is asking. Hi Jan, I have to say that I really like your banter, Blitz, and your opening clinics. Thank you so much. I have one short question. What do you think of the old Indian defense? d4, knight f6, c4, d6. Especially the line 3, knight c3, bishop f5, Janowski variation. Hmm. Is that the Janowski variation? I thought it was the Yobava variation. I thought Yobava is the only guy who plays this stuff and once again I do not have a very high opinion of it. I do have a very high opinion of Yobawa. He's a very creative, entertaining player. Sometimes he pushes his luck a bit in the openings, as with this line, which, yeah, I don't think is any good. But to each their own. I'm not sure what I would do. The most logical to me seems to be go g3, bishop g2, then e4, try to push the bishop back. Yubava's faced this position a couple of times and he's experimented with knight e4 or I don't know what else he did. <clears throat> I'm sure he did something else as well, e5. I don't think any of these positions are particularly attractive for black, but to each their own. By the way, if you give this position to the computer, this I found interesting. The computer gives e4 here, which is really sort of this new wave of super aggressive computers that are willing to sacrifice a central pawn. If knight takes e4, I guess white more or less wins with queen to f3. Well, he doesn't win, but he gets his material back with an excellent position in this line. <clears throat> While if bishop takes e4, then just wants to take and develop quickly and say, you know what, two bishops lead in development. I'm happy with that. I'm not sure I would do this because, yeah, a pawn is a pawn, but I was certainly curious to notice. I would play g3 here, or maybe f3, but no, most likely g3, and be, yeah, probably reasonably happy with my position. As for, yeah, what's my opinion on the old Indian? I think d6 is a fine move. I think the king's Indian is better than the old Indian because in the typical old Indian you put your bishop on e7 where it's just passive. Well, it's better on g7. So I don't have the highest of opinions of it, but it is a playable, even though slightly passive defense. Moving on, I'm only allowed to answer one question, so I'm gonna have to pass on the other one. Sorry, Xenon. Hmm, Kickers fan. 
is saying, Hi Jan, my question is about following position. c4, c6, g3, d5, bishop g2, knight f6, knight f3. I'm a Slav player, so I can't go e6, and after bishop g4, white can go knight e5 with interesting play, as Marine proved in his c4 book. After bishop f5, Marine recommends cd, cd, queen b3. Maybe the best answer for black is the pawn sacrifice with knight c6. The main problem with bishop f5 is that he can play d4 and transpose to a g3 line where I normally play with bishop g4. What do you think about that? Maybe something with d takes c4? First of all, I'm very confused, but I will try to overcome that confusion and answer your question. And once again, as the opening doctor, my first piece of advice would be, well, move order doesn't matter. Don't worry too much about your repertoire, like, oh, in the Slav with bishop g4, I'm, with g3, I normally play with bishop g4, so I can't be move ordered into this line. This position looks totally fine for black, so don't worry about being move ordered here. Right, go h6, e6, get your pieces out, and you have a good position. So I wouldn't be too concerned, like this is not part of my repertoire or whatever. If it's if you play the Slav, then normally you should be happy with such a position, in my opinion. Um, but I do agree that CD followed by Queen B3 is probably more dangerous. Try here. Um, yeah, to really answer the question, take the pawn. It's a pawn, and I believe this is the critical move. They tend to go castles and here black faces a choice knight bd7 is the main line a lot of theory there i have a sort of a liking for the move b5 here which vishyanan recently played against nakamura my friend paco vallejo also plays this the main point is that after a4 bishop b7 b3 this was supposed to be dangerous for black but here black doesn't take on b3 but goes b4 giving the pawn back and after b takes c c5 he does reach a very fine position that's easy to play get the pieces out and you have this passed pawn. So I do like that move. Of course, white has some alternatives, whatever d3 here is interesting, leading to a mess, but I think it's playable and that would be one of my recommendations. The main line with knight bd7 is also playable. Bishop e6 is a playable move here. And the move you mentioned, bishop f5, I think is also very playable. In general, well, this might be too abstract, but with c6, Black tries to build a wall against this bishop on g2. So to answer that with g3, bishop g2, does not strike me as very logical. I understand English players don't want to go for the Slav main lines and they like their bishop on g2, but I'd be very surprised if this line stuck around because it just... The Catalan, I get it, but if Black plays c6, particularly to block this bishop, I don't think this line can be very dangerous. And yeah, I'd probably take, but I've never looked at bishop f5 in much detail. Oops, sorry. So that's, I guess, a very possible move as well. Hope that helped. Hmm. Chicago Dave is saying, Hi Jan, thank you for disproving the American stereotypes that Germans have no sense of humor. Now we know there is at least one of you. Yeah. It's just me. Me and Angela Merkel, though. We're the only two funny people in Germany. Everyone else is, yeah. You're, you guys are right about that. Anyway, moving on to Chicago Dave's question. I play the mainline Karo Khan advance for white. And I'm comfortable in the sharp positions arising after e4, c6, d4, d5, e5, bishop f5, knight f3, e6, bishop e2, c5. But when black plays more cautiously, for example, knight d7 castles h6, and turning knight d7, bishop h7, and knight g6, f5, I find myself at a bit of a loss. I know the top guys play 7, knight bd2, planning a queenside bind with knight b3, and sometimes a4, a5. But is that really anything for white? Can you suggest something more dynamic? I don't want to end up with an, in an advanced French where black has solved the problem of his bishops on c8 for free. All the best, David. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't think I can help you all that much there, David, because that's how you play that position. But it is not to everyone's liking. Like, in the old days, this was considered to be fine for black. You get the bishop out, and then you play slowly, and as you say, you get an advanced French with the bishop out. But very strong players have realized that these positions aren't that easy for black. It's not 
yeah, the space advantage does matter, and it's not a one-to-one -one advance French because, well, black does not get his pieces to natural squares. He doesn't get c5, knight c6, queen b6 so easily. And yeah, he had, here he is playing very slowly, knight d7, h6. And so white should and can also play slowly and try to grab even more space. I'm not into the subtleties here. They, sometimes they start with a4, planning to go a5. Very often they go knight d2, knight b3, and then a4, as you mentioned. And I believe practice has shown that white does, does have good chances in these lines, even though it is also playable for black. But I don't have much to add to that. I do understand if you feel like, yeah, these positions aren't dynamic enough and they're not to your liking, I fully understand. And I would probably or possibly feel the same way. And then I wouldn't play e5, knight f3 here because those you have to have a very good feeling for these positions and you have to be patient and be able to maneuver and so on. So as I mentioned, maybe it's not your cup of tea and you want to go something like knight c3, knight f3 leading to easier play. But in that line you mentioned, no, you gotta be ready for slow play and then try to exploit the space advantage. The good news is, objectively, I believe white should be better there. And that's what Super GM practice has taught us. What else is going on? Oscar Hales is saying, Hi Jan, I really appreciate your work for Chess24. Thanks man. All these banter blitzes, opening clinics and also the Grandmaster analysis. Yeah, I haven't been doing many of those, but once the super tournaments come back, I'll be back doing more GM analysis as well. So I decided to get my premium membership yesterday. Oh, you like the one Kramnagiri with you and Lawrence. <laughs> Thanks. And yeah, welcome Oscar Hales as a premium member. I hope you do enjoy it. Anyway, I never knew what to play against the King's Indian defense with white. Welcome to the club as well. I don't like black's play on the king's side. And then I saw this setup. d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, knight f3, castles, bishop g5, d6, and then e3, bishop e2, queen c2, castles. I believe it's called the Smistof, Smislov system. I've tried it a couple times with players with probably 200 feet more than me, and every time I got a pretty decent position. So my questions are, what is your opinion about this line, and why don't you see it more... Don't, why... I can't speak. Why don't we see it more on the highest level? Thank you, and keep up the good work. I shall try my very best. So, this is a playable line. I don't like it that much. I've also dabbled with the idea. I'll tell you why I don't like it and why I think it's not played more often at the highest level. What I don't like is that I have to give up this bishop if black wants it, and they often want it. I can go h6, bishop h4, g5 here, bishop g3, knight h5, trapping this bishop, and I do believe that this is fine for black. I don't, I don't like it. I like bishops, I don't like parting with it so early. I'm not saying black is better here or anything. Au contraire, this position is certainly playable for white, but it's not an opening I would like to give up this guy so early. Black would take on g3, then go e6, knight d7, and have a lot of long-term potential. So for me, as a friend of the two bishops, it wouldn't be my cup of tea. I'm not into theory here. I think this h6, g5, yeah, it's what would bother me most. There was a game, Carlsen against Geary, maybe. And often they also start with c5, when after d5, which is principled, the same idea is still possible to chase down this bishop. That's what I dislike. I would like it if black had to play sort of normal King's Indian moves, like whatever, knight d7, bishop e2, e5, castles, or queen c2. This position, I think, is fine for white, but yeah, this h6, g5, knight h5 idea does stop me from going there. Which, yeah, is more personal preference than objective evaluations but most strong players they do like the bishops as well so i don't i think that's the reason why we don't see it more often at the highest level if guys want to play with bishop g5 what they normally do is they don't even go c4 but they go knight f3 g6 bishop g5 bishop g7 and now c3 e3 knight bd2 one of those moves which yeah not having played c4 the fear of losing that bishop is not that huge, first of all, because the black bishop wouldn't become so strong on the long diagonal, and often you don't have to give it up here. Not saying this is a better system, I'm just saying, yeah, this is 
I think, more popular than the system you mentioned. But it's playable, so if it gives you good positions, I'm not against it. I'm not gonna trash it. Germaniculus is asking, Dear Jan, I like your work on Chess24. Thank you. Especially your Quincy 2 Nimzo series. And I'm eagerly waiting for your repertoire series against 1d4. Any idea if I can use it before my next tournament in a month time? No, the first part, I think, well, really is the first part, which is more or less done. It's a repertoire against the Catalan, which is arguably the most boring line or the most solid line we're gonna have to deal with. So I'm trying to do it like the Wire Season 2. If you make it through the Wire Season 2, if you make it through the Catalan, then the worst is over and you're gonna have to... Yeah you're in for the better stuff later on. Um, so I think we'll release that one shortly, I'm not quite sure when. But the other stuff is gonna take a little more time. However, if you do watch my banter blitzes, I think you get a very good idea of what the black repertoire is and what I've been up to. But anyway, it's coming out. Anyway, in a recent game I had the Nimzo and black played for b6. I did not have to play the queen be one line you recommended, but it made me remember that you said somewhere this line is a mistake. Do I remember correctly? And if so, what's wrong with it and what do you recommend? Mr. Germaniculus. Um, yeah, there is a mistake in that line. I think I've pointed it out in earlier opening clinics. So don't listen to me. Queen c2, b6 is not a very popular move, but anyway, the line I gave in my video was this. Bishop b7, bishop d3, b5, and I thought queen b1 was a clever move. That's not the case, because after cd, cd, b takes c4, that's what I missed, works. Queen b7, c takes d3, queen a8, queen b6, and if you let the computer run here a bit, it will give 0, 0, black has enough activity to force a draw here, so don't do this. Instead, what I would now recommend is don't go a3, go d5. Changed my mind because of this, yeah, tactical resource. I think d5 is a good move. I thought this was a bit tricky because of bishop queen to e7, and it's not so easy to come up with a good move for white, threatening e d5. But the point is that you can go bishop e2 here, e takes d, e takes d, the move I was worried about is queen to e4, which looks very sneaky with sort of a double attack. But if you feed this to a computer, it will point out the move queen to d2, offering a pawn sacrifice, queen takes g2, bishop f3, queen g6, knight g e2, with pretty overwhelming compensation for the pawn. I think this position could be close to lost for black, because black is not forced to go for this queen e4, queen g2. But since this doesn't seem to work for black, that's what I would do now. Play d5, and if you manage to consolidate, and after bishop e2 it looks like you do, then you get a healthy space advantage, and this pawn chain is quite nicely working against the b7 bishop. So this is not winning after, he, I think black should play something like d6 here, knight f3, castles. Probably bishop e3 is precise to be able to recapture with the queen here, but I'd play this with white and I'd be happy. So, yeah, sorry, there's, there is a mistake in that video. Maybe I'll correct it one day, maybe not, but now you know my current take on the situation. That's why we do these live shows as well. Thanks for asking. I hope that answers your question. Huch Joch is also curious about the Quincy 2 Nemzo, it seems. What is he asking? Hi Jan, I have another question to the Quincy 2 Nemzo. In the 4d5 line, after d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4, queen c2, d5, c, d, e, d, bishop g5, c5, d, c, h6, bishop h4, g5 is the main line. But I do not really understand what to do after castles. Another hole in my series indeed, because as castles became popular right after I released it, Michael Adams played some nice games with it, so let's put it on the board and answer Mr. Huch Joch's questions. First of all, bad news, this is a playable line, and I haven't refuted it, but I do have some opinions. So, knight to c3. Is the show still going my way? Let me check in with the chat. Boring Chess asks, is, it is too late to post questions, I assume. Yeah, I'm sorry, we're not gonna get to those. And what else is going on? 
Ed Jan, why you use so much engines in your online shows? I prefer to use my brain. Engines make you lazy. You're very welcome to use your brain, Lao Tse. Then you're not gonna need my engine to answer your question. Feel free to use it as much as you want. Um, moving on to the Nimzo Indian. Bishop b4, queen c2, d5, cd, ed, bishop to g5, h6, bishop h4, c5, d takes c. And yeah, uh, first of all, I fully agree. Castles is a good move here. It became popular thanks to some games by Michael Adams. After the show, I haven't I have had a look at it and I did not manage to refute it. The line you were giving, yeah, there's long castles, it doesn't work. I do agree there. This is just too greedy, I think. What, what do you give something like this? And no, this position, I don't believe it one bit. Just looking at it, white is not developed at all. His king is sort of exposed. I haven't checked it much. Knight a6 is probably a good move. Queen f2 is probably also good. But yeah, there's no way this works for white, so don't do this. In my opinion, the critical move is e3 indeed. When this plan Adams has popularized with bishop e6, knight f3, and knight bd7, that was his subtlety, and intending to create quick counterplay against a c3 knight without weakening his king side. And it's a good plan. I can't say much. There were some games where people played bishop e2 and got nothing. In my opinion, the most critical move here is a3. If Black goes bishop takes c5, I'd be reasonably happy, then his plan has sort of backfired and we can develop peacefully. Just go bishop d3 and then castle. When I think black white is slightly better, so there is no yeah, no reason to be afraid of that. The principal move, well first of all, queen a5, I'm not so sure how good this move is here. Because then white does have bishop takes f6, knight takes f6 and rook to c1. When, yeah, if black would have to take on c3 here, he'd be worse, and bishop c5, b4 seems to be good for white as well. So that's a little trap you set with a3, because queen a5 does look like the most natural move. But the principal move is bishop takes c3, and this is the area which I would have to analyze a bit further, or you, if you're interested in that. Oh, did I mix something up? Oh, yeah, I did. This does happen once per show. Did I? Confused. What's happening? How did I do this? It does look perfect on my screen, but I do see what you mean. This is very confusing. <laughs> I'll work on that. Hm. If I close this, it's still there. I'm extremely confused, but fortunately I'm a great graphic designer and yeah, here we go. I made it. I'm very sorry about that and I guess I'm gonna have to sort of restart with this segment. Um, so where were we? DC castles. Yeah, this is a good line, which I haven't covered. Long castles doesn't work. Bishop c3. No, sorry. Overall general confusion. Bishop e6, bishop f6, queen f6. Knight d5, bishop d5, rook d5, and black has such a huge lead. In development, you can't play this. Knight a6, or queen takes f2, it's just no good. What you have to do is you have to go for the move e3, then the Adams plan is bishop e6, knight f3, knight bd7, intending to go rook c8, and this is unpleasant after bishop e2, white got nothing in some games. I think Shirov and Dre have played this with white. So I believe the critical move is a3 here. Bishop c5, bishop d3 is good for white, or very pleasant at least. Queen a5 doesn't work because of bishop f6, knight f6, rook c1 with a huge edge. And black has to go for bishop takes c3. That was a short version of everything I just said, just with the board hopefully. Bishop c3, queen c3, and this position is a mess. g5, bishop g3, knight e4, queen d4, this seems to be best play. Knight d takes c5, rook to d1. And that's the one I would investigate further if I were you or if I were me. This is, I believe, the critical test. Black has a c 
couple options here. Rook c8 looks natural. Rook c8 b4 with very sharp position. What, but what I do like is that if white manages to consolidate, he will be almost winning or much better positionally. So black has to play very dynamically to not make that happen. And I'm not ruling that out. This is a mess, as I said here. Like the board will be on fire and it could be that works for black. But this is where to put in the energy and the critical line. I'm reasonably sure white is at least not worse. Maybe black has a way to sort of hold, but I think that's the way to go. Knight b3, queen b4. Looks good for white. So sorry for that board hiccup. Let's go to the next question. Let me check with the chat if people can see the board fine now. Um, yeah, looks like it. Sorry about that. Not quite sure how that happened. That looked very confusing. So we answered hook your questions. Let's move on to Abraham Payton. After e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, c, d, knight d4, knight f6, knight c3, g6, bishop e3, bishop g7, f3, knight d6, queen d2. I have noticed a little publicized move order trick that apparently black can still play in the Sicilian dragon. The Yugoslav variation of all places utilizing bishop d7 with the idea of delaying castling against all of white's ninth moves. Except against bishop c4 of course when black must transpose with castles. I've read tidbits that black can start generating an immediate queenside attack when white plays either nine long castles followed by rook c8 or when white plays g4 and black counters with knight e5. Have you studied this line any? Apparently GM Chris Ward on Chess Publishing still claims this line is open for investigation and play. I only encountered this idea from I am Andrew Martin's 2005 piece starting out the Sicilian Dragon. I was wondering what you thought about it. Have you played around with it? Impressions? No refutations? Thanks. Yeah, I don't think it's the greatest of ideas. Um, well, there was a lot of text, but a lot of it sounded a bit like um, marketing text if you want to sell an idea that yeah, leads to something interesting, but it's not... It's not logical, that's my problem with it, and I'll try to explain why. So queen d2, castles is the main line here, of course, with good reason. And one big point of castles is that after long castles here, you don't go bishop d7, but you go d5, creating a mess in the center immediately. That's one of the main lines of the dragon. So that's ruled out after bishop d7. Another main line of the dragon is bishop c4, and here, indeed, you can go bishop d7, let's say, Long castles, rook c8, bishop b3, knight e5, whatever. King b1, knight to c4, takes, takes, g4. And this just for comparison's sake, let's keep in mind how often the white bishop moved before it was exchanged on c4. Went to c4, that's 1, then went to b3, that's 2, then it took on c4, that's 3. Well now let's play the move bishop d7, and let's say I go g4. You go rook c8, I will castle into the attack. You go knight to e5, I will go, let's say king b1, and you will continue your attack with knight c4. Now I'll take it, and how often did my bishop move? It moved exactly one time to arrive on c4. And that means after rook takes c4, I'm sort of too tempy up compared to this line I just gave, which is also considered to be dangerous for black. Whatever, you go h4 in this position does not look playable for, to me. I understand that probably knight c4 is not the best move and people would try something else here. But I do not believe in this idea. Bishop d7 just looks not flexible enough. Because also, to give you another comparison, g4 is another main line of the dragon. And here white black has two playable setups. One is knight takes d4, bishop d4 and then bishop e6. The other is the immediate bishop e6. Bishop d7 has a pretty bad reputation against g4. The only line where you really want to play with bishop d7 is when white goes bishop c4 and bishop b3, because then this bishop has lost some time and makes sense to try to exchange it with knight e5, rook c8. So I'm not a big fan. I think g4 is the most precise. I've seen some games where after long castles, black went h5, trying to stop g4. 
which looks a bit nutty, but this makes White's task much tougher. So I wouldn't be surprised if this line was tried once in a while. I would probably go g4 here, and I don't understand what Black is doing. So yeah, sorry, but that is my honest opinion on that line. I've never studied it in detail because the move just doesn't look logical enough to me to spend more time on it. Dragon is an interesting opening. No, I am a bit of a dragon aficionado. Q3 DM17 is asking or saying, in yesterday's Banter Blitz session, it was my honor to play the Marshall Gambit as black against no less than GM Jan Gustafsson, also known as world record holder for the longest toilet break in the history of Chess24. Yeah, I had a bit of an accident yesterday. I locked myself out during a live show. Only took me 90 minutes to get back in because, well, life's very tough if you don't have your cell phone, don't have your keys, don't have no money. It's hard to get back into a locked office, but yeah, I did make it. And afterwards I won this game against Q3DM17. By the way, Q3DM17, if you've seen the show, I did share pretty much all I know about that line in that very live banter blitz video, but I'll briefly put it on the board again, else feel free to re-watch that tape on this line that you played. Um... e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop b5, a6, bishop a4, knight f6, castles, bishop e7. Stop reading out the moves. There are coordinates, I think you guys can tell. So, the starting position of the marshal, I played d3, bishop d6, the main line, rook e1, and you want queen h4, which does not have a good reputation here. If, yeah, in my video series on the marshal, I give bishop f5, and that's the move most people play with good reason. Queen h4 is the main line after d4, it's not considered to be so good after d3, and the reason is this move rook e4, planning rook h4, with the pawn on d4, black has g5 here, this is a key resource. Bishop g5, queen f5, and if the pawn was here, this would be a double attack, but it's not. So it's not a double attack and doesn't work. In the game you played knight to f6, that's one of the main moves in this position, which, as I said, I don't think is good for black. Rook h4, queen f5, knight d2, this is still the main line. And I can't remember what you played here. Bishop e6, yeah, I think bishop e6, knight e4, and white is much better. Yeah, as I said, I don't believe in this line for black. I've tried to make it work, didn't manage. The main move is g5 here, rook h6, knight g4, which looks cute because rook d6, queen f2 is checkmate. But the problem is that white goes knight to e4 here, turns the tables by offering material himself, and after knight h6, knight d6, queen g6, knight to e4 back, turns out that Black is in trouble, or at least that's what I think, even though he's in exchange up. There was some game. Anand Shirov, and yeah, every time I've looked at this line, it did not really tempt me to revisit it. So I can only recommend, don't go queen h4, go bishop f5. In this position after rook e4, yeah, there's different moves. Knight f6 is one of them. I'm sure people have tried queen f5. I think I've tried something like bishop b7, rook h4, queen d7 once, but none of it is really recommended, so I would suggest to have a look at bishop f5, for example, at my excellent video. Thanks, q3, dm17. Let's Beast is saying, Hello Jan, what are the reasons for black to play d4, knight f6, c4, c6 and transpose into a Slav instead of playing the classical d4, d5, c4, c6? Are there any ways for white to take advantage of this different move order? Thank you and congratulations on winning the banter brawl. Yeah, thanks, one of my proudest achievements. Um, I don't think a lot of Slav players use that move order with d4, knight f6, c4, c6. It's one disadvantage, as far as I know, which might not be used, huge, but it is an extra option for white, just to play the move bishop to f4 here, and after d5 go e3, tending to go knight to c3. 
Some extra theory, black could go queen b6 here or d6 or whatnot, but it is an option that you don't have in the Slav, because after d4, d5, c4, c6, bishop f4 is not supposed to be a good move because black can take on c4 and yeah, bishop is silly here for those lines, even though I'm sure I've played it once, but it's just not very good. So I don't think this move order has a lot of advantages compared to the Slav move order, and I'm frankly not sure why people would play this instead of d4, d5, c4, c6. And most people don't. Most Slav players do go d4, d5, c4, c6, as far as I know. But yeah, I only know there's one drawback with bishop f4, but no advantage to it. Jorn Gustafsson, excellently chosen username, is saying, Hi there, do you think that the Rouse's Gambit, d4, d5, c4, not f6? I think you might have messed up the move order there, but I do get what you mean. c4, not f6, knight f3, not f6, queen c2, d c4, 5 e4, with black's main replies being b5 or bishop g4, could be a decent weapon for white in avoiding the Marons and the Moscows in the Slav. If black goes for it, of course. And nope, I don't think it's that good. D4, D5. Am I allowed to make D play D5? Ah, here we go. C4, I guess you all mean C6. Knight F3, Knight F6, Queen C2, and D takes C4. E4. For starters, queen c2 is a respectable move. If I was trying to get that position, I would normally go queen b3, because after queen c2, I, as far as I know, g6 is a good reply for black, which is less effective after queen to b3. But queen c2, d takes c4 in this position, well, I would recapture, and this is a respectable line that is tried at all levels, bishop f5 or bishop g4 with complicated play. Black should be alright, but it's interesting. The gambit itself, yeah, I don't think it's that good. I think black can just go b5, b3, and take the pawn. Bishop g4 here, or one move earlier, is also interesting. But I just thought you take it and go e6, and it doesn't look that impressive to me. I think what they play is bishop to d2 here, and then black has been doing alright by going a5. So... No, I don't have a very high opinion of this gambit. I've had a look at it once and tried to make it work for white, but I decided it didn't and I was not gonna go there. Instead, yeah, as I said, if you wanna avoid all the theory in the main lines after queen c2, dc, queen c4, I think it's not bad, but after queen c2, g6, as far as I know, it's a pretty good move. Then bishop f4 either takes here now or even these lines with bishop g7 and the later bishop f5. And so I would go queen b3 instead, but it's a matter of taste. The Rouse's Gambit, I didn't know it was called that, but yeah, I'm not a big fan. What else we got? Henry0813 is saying, Hello, I play the King's Indian Defenses Black, but has problems against a particular system in which white plays g3, e3, knight f3, knight g e2. Which, what system is that and how to play against? I'm sorry Henry, I've thought about this question, I haven't been able to figure out what you mean. I'll take a guess, but I am honestly not sure. I guess instead of knight f3 you mean knight c3, just as yawn instead of knight f6 meant c6. And I guess you mean a setup, but this is really just me guessing. With mm, white playing, let's say d4, knight f6, c4, g6. I don't know about the move order, but I'll put something on the board. Bishop g2, d6, e3, and knight g2. This is really only my guess. I'm not sure I couldn't quite figure out what you meant. And yeah, this is a playable system for white. It's not bad at all. I, yeah, I'm not a King's Indian guy. If I was faced with this position, I would probably play d5 already, transposing to some Grundfeldish territory where knight c3 and g3 don't mix so well. But 
yeah, assuming we get this position, I think black has more than one playable plan. C5 followed by knight c6 looks playable. The most classical way to play would be something like e5, knight e2, knight bd7, castles, rook e8. And then attending a setup with like queen e7, c6, knight f8, e4, which leads to sharp play. It's sort of a king's Indian attack reversed, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Not sure it does. Well, let's say yeah, knight bd7, white often plays h3 here, h5, this is a game, queen c2, c6, b3, knight f8, rook d1, queen e7. This is a game between Aronian and Grishuk. Black intends to go bishop f5 and e4 and create some play on the king side with sharp play. So I think this is playable for black, it's also playable for white, it's not a bad system, but nothing to be too scared of. And if you meant something completely different, I can only apologize. This is my guess. If you want to make sure I don't guess wrongly, put a position just like Jorn did here, and then I'll be more secure I'm talking about the right stuff. I hope that was it though, Henry. Ace Tont is saying, as a kid, I used to play the Russian with black. I think you mean, do they call it the Russian in English? I think in English it's the Petrov, in German we call it the Russian. So I'm gonna, once again, assume you mean that. I don't like that anymore, but I wonder if it is a bad opening, because I can't recall any Russian games lately. It's not a bad opening, but it has fallen out of fashion a little bit, especially at top level. And the reason, in my opinion, is that this line with knight 5 knight c3 is still going strong and these positions have just been unpleasant to defend after takes bishop e3 or bishop f4, queen d2, long castles. White has had good results in practice and people have decided why do I have to suffer in the Petrov when I can just play the Berlin where I'm not gonna get mated and most of them have moved there or they've moved to the Nidorf where they said why do I have to suffer in the Petrov where I can get mated in the knight of, but also might mate my opponent without giving him a free attack where his king is covered by four pawns. So that's my theory. I've never been much of a Petrov guy, but I think that's why it sort of went out of fashion, but it might come back. I don't think it's a bad opening. Pramod NVS is saying, Hi Jan, what's the latest TV series that you're watching? I would suggest you watch The Mentalist and Legends. Both of them are suspense ones. I think you like them. Oh, sorry, I should bring up the question. Here it is. No, I've seen a bit of The Mentalist. I found it a bit boring. I mean, you can watch it. It's sort of this thing where you can watch one episode, doesn't matter if it's in season three or season one, and it's sort of standalone. It's okay, it's light, but I wasn't a huge fan. Um, and yeah, Legends I haven't tried. Will you suggest a line against e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, c3, queen e7 for an advantage for white? Can we use the early queen move of black to white's advantage? Thanks, and yeah, I think I can beat you in TV series knowledge. Congratulations on that. Knowledge maybe, taste, uh, I'm not that sure. Anyway, move queen e7. Hmm, <clears throat> does look like a bad move. Why would you move your queen so early in the opening? Yeah, the main move here, and for good reasons, is knight f6, developing the knight, attacking the e4 pawn and preparing to castle. Queen e7, yeah, I think it can be refuted instantly, even though one could try. I would probably go d4, e takes d is, I guess, just too dangerous for black. This is the sort of gambit I like. Now we're pawn down, but knight d5 is coming with tempo, we got like three development. Tempi in this position, I think, is already winning for white. Let's say knight f6. Knight d5, or even e5. I'm making up moves here, but just to show that this could end up very badly, very quickly. How do we mate? Is there any cute way to mate? Hmm. Nah, still no mate, but yeah, this position looks pretty good. Must be a mate. Anyway, I'm getting <coughs> carried away here. So I think d4 is a good move. e takes d, castles is very strong. You can't take on e4 because of queen e1, of rook e1. You can't take on c3 because you're falling too far behind in development. So what they do is they go bishop b6 here. 
And now white could go for the kill with knight g5, but it does look like black sort of stays alive with knight h6, even though in this position I'd take white for sure after castles, but this is sort of a more messy affair. So the solid way to play is to go to castles here. I think black's gonna go d6, wherever we play a3, knight f6, rook e1. And you get a normal Italian setup where black has played queen e7 too early, which is not such a great square for the queen. It normally is a square that the knight would like to use. It's not winning, but I'd take white. You can go a4, or ideas with bishop g5 are always interesting. And yeah, queen e7, it's not a terrible move, but it's also not a very good move. Knight f6 is just much better, keeping flexibility. The only thing you have to know after knight f6 is that after d4, e d4 works for black. So some guys might use this move to avoid theory, but I'm not very impressed. And yeah, if you're not into punishment mode, you can also just play whatever. d3, knight d2, knight f1. Like the queen on e7 doesn't make a lot of sense against all the typical Italian plans. So I hope that answered your question and thanks for the TV show recommendations. Britty is saying, Hey Jan, in the artificial castling variation of the Benko Volga Gambit, white has two plans what to do with this king, g3, king g2, or a3, king g1, king h2. I'm not sure which plan is better. I know g3, king g2 is more popular and it's faster, but after a3, king g1, king h2, the king is a bit safer and the g4 square is already under control. What do you think, which variation is better for white? Um, g3, king g2 is better. I've played both, but g3, king, g2 is better, it's a move faster, and the king is quite safe on g2, not worse off than on h2. If you want to go h3, you can do it anyway, but g3, king, g2 is a better way to play. Let's briefly put it on the board, but briefly, I've talked so much about the Banco here, all this fascination with the Banco gamut out there is fascinating me. d4, knight f6, c4, c5, d5, b5 takes a6, b takes a6, bishop a6, which by the way is not how you should play the banker nowadays, you should go for g6, bishop g7 castles. And bishop a6, knight c3, d6, knight f3, g6, e4, takes, king takes, bishop g7, and yeah, g3 or a3, g3 is better, castles king g2, knight b7, and here a4 is all the rage, or queen e2, followed by a4, and white is a bit better. And the other line with a3, let's say castles king g1, knight b7, king h2, the extra move spent does matter, and black just plays all these typical banker moves, queen a5, rook fb8, knight e8, knight c7, knight b5, and he's more or less in time to create some counterplay, so this line is less good. I hope that answers your question. Nikita Kantor is asking, Hi Jan, what is your opinion of the smith moro gambit? e4, c5, d4, cd, c3, dc, knight c3. Is it a good choice to avoid the theoretical fights of the open Sicilian? Or are there better alternatives with decent theory? A lot of theory in the smith moro gambit, isn't there? I would suggest you go for the theoretical fights of the open Sicilian. But I do not think that the mora is that bad an opening as, for example, the flank gambit. I think white gets sort of enough compensation for the pawn in the Mora. No more than that. The reason I've never worried about it for one second is that as a c5 player you need a repertoire against c3 and mine is knight f6, e5, knight d5. And if you face a Mora guy after d4, c, d, c3, you can force them into this territory by going knight f6, declining the pawn sacrifice and playing this position, which I think is fine for black. So I don't think the Mora is a very clever practical choice because you also have to know the 18 decent defenses for black and most Sicilian players, they will have a plan against the Mora. So I think white gets, yeah, as I said, Probably enough compensation, no more than that. There's many playable systems. One is this e6, a6, knight g7. I talked about that in an earlier show, I believe. Another one I'm quite fond of is to play a6 here, and after castles knight f6. That's the only trick to avoid, I 
think that you shouldn't start with knight f6 because of e5. I believe this trick is out there. And you shouldn't allow that. But if you go a6, castles, knight f6, now e5 is no longer dangerous. Takes. Takes, takes. And if white doesn't have knight b5 here, he's not going to cause any problems. So you play this, and if white plays his typical plan, queen e1, queen 2 rook d1, bishop f4, then black has a very strong move, bishop g4, playing to go e6, bishop e7, and after h3 you just take on f3 and you remain a healthy pawn up. So normally white plays something more clumsy like h3 here, but if you have to go h3, it's a bit hard to believe. Black plays e6 and is fine. So that's one system I like. Another system I like is e6, castles, knight f6. Once again, now this works having played e6. White typically goes queen e2, bishop e7, rook d1, threatening e5. Black goes e5 himself, physically blocking that. Then he follows it up with castles, and here's a pawn up where white, yeah, is gonna scramble to create some positional compensation for it, and he might manage to create sufficient compensation, but never more than that. Oh, he has to go h3 here to stop bishop g4 at some point. So yeah, I don't think the Mora is a good opening. I think black has more than one way to equalize comfortably, and he has a good way to decline it, but I also don't think it's that bad, and I'm not sure you're risking to be worse with white. And you could try it, however, as I always say, main lines are main lines for a reason, and you will certainly more learn more about chess and improve faster as a chess player if you go for open Sicilians instead of the Mora Gambit. Dr. Boki is asking, what are currently the critical lines for black against your 4 queen c 2 Nimzo Repertoire series? Can White still fight for an edge? Chess24 is getting better and better. Let's make it a little worse by not really answering that question. I've talked about the two queen c2 lines earlier. I think else, yeah, my repertoire series is still pretty much up to date, but I did th do think I mentioned the spots where Black can't fight for equality after both castles and d5. And I don't think stuff has changed there all that much. So sorry to once again disappoint Dr. Boki if you have a more specific question, then by all means, ask them. Um, Stormbird is asking, Hi Jan, great shows. <laughs> I try, not that hard today, but I do try. What do you think about the line in the Karakan, e4, c6, knight c3, d5, 3, queen, e2? Is that a good surprise weapon? People spend so much time like contemplating surprise weapons. If you just spent a short amount of that time learning one of the main lines, like knight c3, knight f3, 3e5, <coughs> 3 knight c3, you'd be much better off. And um, anyway, yeah, I think it's not such a bad move. Why it's not worse after it. I also don't think it's that great because, yeah, why would it be that great to make this random queen move on the third move? So, it's playable. I believe the best black can do and should do is grab some space, go d4, knight d1, e5, and we get some sort of reversed king's Indian, g3, bishop d6, let's say d3. And black has a choice. The most natural way to play, I think, is just to play c5, knight c6, knight e7, where white, if he's lucky, he might somehow achieve f4 in one go, but it's not so easy. And even if he does, black has the big advantage that he didn't put his knight on f6 yet, but can put it on e7. So these positions are, yeah, playable for both sides would be my best guess. White can also, black can also try to throw in an earlier queen c7, sort of trying to make it harder for white to go f4 and then develop with knight e7 castles. So I think black is fine after d4, but I do think this is a playable line. Another move, yeah, I have always have a soft spot for is move a6 in such a position. Hoping for knight f3, bishop g4 here. Now the white play queen e2. Probably d4 is better when black should take on e4. When, yeah, white might have some hope for an opening advantage here. I'm not sure how realistic, but the game certainly continues. But yeah, I believe d4, e5 is best, and white is not worse. So if you're comfortable in that position, by all means, go for it. But I believe it pays off more to, yeah, I don't know develop pieces, fight for the center, that kind of stuff. This knight is not very well placed on d1.
Stretcher. He also likes the shows. Like, I gotta insult people even more to... <clears throat> Stop all this love. No, man. seriously, I do appreciate it. Thanks. Hi, yeah, nice shows. Keep going. I'm trying, but we're already two hours in. My voice is giving up. Let's drink some stuff. <clears throat> this is orange juice. Very unhealthy. Lots of sugar, but it does give you some quick energy, which I hopefully need now. Hopefully neat. See, I'm not making sense. Regular viewers of this program will know what happens within 10 minutes after I drink anything. And sometimes I don't come back after visiting the <clears throat> facilities because I might lock myself out. Let's get in Stetcher's question before this could happen. Hi Jan, nice shows, keep going. I'm looking for a comfortable line for white in the Marochi. I like comfort. There is one topic line. Knight f3, c5, c4, g6, e4, knight c6, d4, cd, knight d4. Knight f6, knight c3, d6, 7, f3. That is the trendy move, I've noticed that. If people play knight d4, queen d4, bishop g7, bishop b3, castles, queen d2, a5, it seems like knight a4 gives chance for an advantage. Disagree with that, we'll get to that. While after bishop e2, this doesn't work, and 10 a5 is nice for, nice for black. If f3, why don't people play bishop g7, bishop e3, castles, queen d2, and now knight d4, seldom played at high level, and after bishop d4, queen a5, rook c1, bishop e6, b3, rook fc8, black is the tempo, bishop e2 up, compared to the old main line. Sure you know this one, I do. Complex stuff, but I think it's one question, what do you think? Thanks in advance. And I do agree with most of the stuff you said, and I can tell that you did put some thought into this. I had a similar train of thought, so let me show you where I agree and where I disagree. And in which move order did I file this? Here? Yep. C4, knight f6. This is the position you were talking about. And yeah, bishop e2 is the old main line where, well, white is a bit better, but nothing to write home about. f3 is a trendy move. And yeah, there was this famous game, Karana Carlson, which went something like this. Castles, queen d2, a5. And here, I don't think knight a4 is a good move. I think the best move is the one Karana actually played. b3, intending to meet a4 with b4. And black is in serious trouble. Carlson somehow managed to survive that game, but he certainly is not gonna re want to repeat that experience. So I think this is good for white. And having established that, I ask myself the same thing. Why don't they go for this, and this, and this? And here, yeah, you're fully right. I think queen d2 is a mistake. That's probably the key point. Because now black indeed takes on d4, and after bishop d4, this bishop ever returns to e3, white has lost the tempo compared to a line where, yeah, like here. Let's say black takes, and white goes queen d4, and then queen d2 in one go. So black can... White can lose that tempo if he's careless with queen to d2. Not sure how much sense that makes, but my point is white should go bishop e2 in this position. Now things are a little different and I'm not 100% sure, I'm still trying to figure it out what white has gained here, but it looks to me like this is reasonably promising. Now after knight d4, bishop d4, I think bishop e2 is a much more useful move than queen d2, and the queen can remain on d1 in many lines. Let's say queen a5, short castles, bishop e6, this looks like normal play. Tier 1 would not go queen d2, but instead, yeah, I think Kasparov played king h1 here once, which looked like a decent move, and my computer is very excited about going f4, introducing the idea of f5. So, I haven't analyzed it that much, and I can't really claim to have a full understanding of what's going on and what's not going on, but I'm reasonably sure bishop e2 in this position is the way to go, and not queen to d2. There was some recent game where Mamedov played knight h5 against Wesley, so did not enjoy that experience much and got comprehensively crushed after g3. I don't think knight h5 is a very good move, but 
you might want to look at that game anyway. So yeah, that's uh, as far as I've gotten, which is admittedly not very far. And yeah, I do agree with everything else you said. I think this is a better way for black to play. And this a5 line is rendered useless by f3, which is why they start with f3 instead of bishop e2 nowadays. So I hope that helped a bit. I'm also, I haven't fully figured it out, but I will also keep studying that line. Satirica is saying, Hi Jan, Paco Vallejo, I'm familiar with that guy. Provided a repertoire based on the Scotch game in a series about e4, e5. After, against 4 knight f6, the most critical in my opinion, in my opinion too, he recommended a sideline, that is knight c6, bc, 6 queen e2. 7 queen e7, 6 queen e7, try and transpose, does not work, 7 knight to c3. Um, interesting, what do you think? Yeah, I agree, main line black is fine. What would you play against this line? What do you consider the critical move here? I will probably pay the price for not having studied Paco's video on that one, but I will tell you what I think. Very creative, that Vallejo guy. He's come up with so many interesting moves. Yeah, I agree that after e5, queen e7, queen e2, black is fine. And queen e2 is an interesting move. I disagree that queen e7 is a bad move here, trying to transpose. e5, as you mentioned, transposes. And knight c3, I think this is not so bad for black. After queen to e6, intending to go bishop b4 or bishop c5, this position strikes me as pretty playable. Not that I've spent endless amounts of times on it, but it does look playable to me. What I would normally do though is probably the most natural move here, to play d6. I think that's what they tend to play. There was some game Nakamura Kramnik with g3, bishop e7, bishop g2, castles, followed by rook e8, and then knight d7, bishop f6, where black got a good position. g3 might be a bit slow. Pakola himself later played knight c3, bishop e7, bishop e3, castles, and long castles. This is a very sharp position, but I would be surprised if black was in trouble here. I'm not sure in that game, I don't kind of remember what happened, I think bishop e6, a5 or something might also be a playable move. So yeah, this strikes me as playable for black and the line with queen e7, queen e6 also looks playable, but I should go back and watch Paco's video to see what he recommended against those and maybe I'll have a more qualified opinion. If you put a gun to my head or surprised me with it tomorrow, I would probably, probably play that queen e7, queen e6 stuff. I'll play that d6 stuff. And probably I play that d6 stuff because there, if something goes wrong, it can't be going too wrong. Well, if I played Paco and I had a feeling I might run into his preparation, I would want to have spent more time on queen e7, queen e6. So I go d6, bishop e7, castles, and take it from there. Anyway, that, those are my thoughts, but I haven't spent that much time on that stuff. Center 1, 2, 3. Hi, Jan. I like playing against the Nimzo India, 4f3, but I don't like this line. 4f3, c, d5, a3, bishop c3, bc, c5, cd, knight d5, dc5, etc. Is there any good alternative to avoid this line as white? Thanks in advance. Nope, I'm sorry, there's not. That's the main line which this whole system is based on. So if you don't like it, I think <clears throat> you might wanna play something else than f3. There are some alternatives, they're just not very good. After c5, cd, knight d5. In the old days they played moves like queen d2, queen, th queen d3, queen c2 here, but they are very good and the Renaissance of that line started with the move dc5 and there were tons of theoretical discussions after queen a5 or f5 here. So if you don't like that complex, I think f3 is not for you. You can try one of those moves, maybe white is not worse, but I'm not sure they're very good. Queen d3 looks logical, intending e4, but after b6, e4, bishop a6, black gets quite active quite quickly. Probably if you have a look at a position like this one, it strikes me as very, very risky, but to try it for one game, it's also risky for black. If white manages to develop and control the center, why not? Maybe this is playable. A computer gives something like equality, I think, but for one game this could be a try, but if you want this to have a, be a stronghold in your repertoire, dc5 is a critical move 
for a raisin here. Hope that helps. Probably not that much, but that's how I do it. Hmm. Abraham Payton, didn't I answer that question already? I think I answered that question already. Maybe I misscrolled earlier or it's there twice. I'm not sure. I also answered this Q3DM question. I don't know, this feels like Groundhog Day. Maybe I scrolled somewhere. Or all the questions are here twice. Maybe we're done with the show. Maybe there's a there's a glitch in the matrix. Oh, and here we are again. Feels like the same spot. This is all very confusing. Anyway, Alexander TJ1 is saying, Hi Jan, I play the Grunfeld, but I don't like the line with Queen B3. D4, Knight F6, C4, G6, Knight C3, D5, Queen B3. I've tried something with DC, Queen C4, Bishop G7, Knight F3, Castle 7, E4, B6, but I don't get anything special out of it. I'm not surprised. Do you have some good ideas in this line for black? I have some good ideas, but I'll tell you we have some even better ideas. It's Super Grandmaster Peter Swidler, who was kind enough to do a whole repertoire series for on the Grunfeld for us. So I would like to refer you there and check what Peter has to say. You gave Queen B3, the more common move order is to start with knight f3 and then queen b3 the reason being that in this position bishop e6 is fine for black but i will assume that you mean this position e4 and yeah b6 does not strike me as a very good move here main moves are knight to a6 or a6 with knight to c6 catching some momentum i believe peter recommended the move which i also prefer the move a6 trying to get a lot of dynamic counterplay with B B5 and C5 quickly and honestly the best I can do is send you there and check out these videos and try whatever Peter says he tends to know his stuff here even though he recently had yeah, a blackout against Gelfand do as he says not as he does I think that's a good rule for most of these guys watching videos Normally, people on video can be trusted more than what they actually play during the game. Me, definitely included. So yeah, play a6 and study Swidler's stuff on it. What does NM Ruck have to say? Hi Jan, what openings would you recommend for a beginner to learn first and how deep do you need to remember? You don't need to remember anything deeply. Openings really opposite to popular opinion are not a memory contest it's more about getting a feel like what works for you and what doesn't and the more time you spend with it and yeah spend researching the easier this will come to memory but i'm not an opening expert because i remember 25 moves in every line i do consider myself an opening expert because i have a decent grasp of what the critical lines are and i can normally update myself quickly before a game um, anyway, going to the main question, what openings? I have no idea. All the main openings are good. E4, some people say you learn quickest in these E4, E5 positions. I'm not sure. I started playing D4, never played anything else. And that was also a bit of an advantage because normally people were less well-versed there than in E4, E5 positions. My only advice is always, yeah, stick to main lines, even though they might be confusing and I know it's attractive to whatever play the wings gambit or play the <clears throat> vienna with two knight c3 and f4 instead of having to learn all this Rui lopez or all this scotch and so on but it will pay off big time the earlier you start looking at main lines the more you will learn so that's really my advice what main lines you choose your call there's a lot of good video series on anything on this site well not on anything but on a lot of stuff so I'm sorry if that didn't help. I could also tell you, yeah, play the knight off and play d4 with white. And against 1d4, you play the queen's gambit declined. That would be good advice, but so would be any repertoire that includes main openings. So whatever works for you, whatever you like. But the more main line, the more of a friend I am of your choice. Lao Tse is saying, hello Jan, I like for instance the Italian game. This line I want to bring to your attention. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, d3. Since I want to use the c3 square for my pawn instead of my knight. So I can't get my so I can get my bishop to c2. 
But at a given point, black plays d5, and I don't want to take. But I also want my... I also want, also want my bishop to get to c2. Since I think, just like in the Ruy Lopez, the white-colored bishop belongs on c2 in those two openings. Okay, I do not think that. How to avoid or prepare against an eventual d5 in the Italian game? Thanks in advance. Yours sincerely, Lao Tse. That is a very general question and as you guys probably know I struggle with those. There's a million different situations. Sometimes a bishop is good on c2, sometimes it should not be there. Sometimes d5 is a good move, sometimes it's not a good move. So anyway, let's make some moves. c3, d6, whatever, let's say knight bd2, castles. <clears throat> ah, maybe d6 was Okay, let's say castles just for discussion's sake. There's a couple different lines here. One of them is castles and black goes d5. Here you should not even dream of trying to get your bishop to c2, chess concrete game. Here you have to go e takes d5 and play this position, which is a very sharp main line. Takes and rook e1, try to organize play against the pawn on e5. If black plays more slowly after d6, here what you should do, well, might as well be the pawn on a6 and serve short castles, but here bishop b3 tends to be a good idea to step away from knight a5. But this bishop should not really go to c2 unprovoked. The idea of the Italian is not so much to tuck this bishop away to c2, but either to later create space in the center or to typically also play this knight maneuver h3, rook e1, knight d2, knight f1, knight g3, or knight e3. This bishop is beautifully placed on this diagonal. Well, if it gets challenged, you have to remove it, but it normally forces a concession. And of course, d5 could happen at some point. Let's make some moves along one of the main lines. This is a typical position. And here, yeah, let's say white plays something, knight g3, then indeed black would take and go d5 or play d5 immediately and be fine. So some people try the move bishop c2 here, trying to keep the tension. I don't think it's particularly scary, but this has been tried. And then after d5, white goes queen e2 and tries to play a position like this, just building very slowly. Knight g3, bishop d2, rook d1. This is possible, I don't think white is better, but it is a playable setup and it is a line where white does go bishop c2, but even here it's not 100% deliberately, but after this exchange was threatened. As for how to deal with d5, yeah, there once again are no real rules of thumb. In the line I've shown earlier, you absolutely have to take on d5 to keep the game going. Here you probably can get away with bishop c2, d5, queen e2 or bishop d2 and trying to keep this sort of tension. So I hope that does help, maybe it doesn't, else yeah, I recommend you use your own brain to figure it out as you recommend it in the comments section. Thanks for the question, Lao Tse. Luke71 is saying, Hi Jan, I like to play 1g6 against c4, and why not? In which situations is the setup with g6, bishop g7, e6, knight e7 a good idea? What would you play against c4? Thanks in advance. Um, let's answer the first part of your question. Never. Never go g6, bishop g7, e6, knight e7. I think that's a very good rule of thumb to follow where you can't go wrong at all. And I am sort of serious. What would you play against c4? I vary depending on, yeah, my opponent, my repertoire, my opponent's repertoire, and so on and so forth. I. I've played c4, g6, but then typically yeah, with the idea of playing, let's say, the symmetrical line, I've had this a couple times, c5, knight, c6, but yeah, in such a position, really, don't go e6, knight, e7. It's not terrible, but e6, as a rule, does not mix very well with g6 because it leaves these weaknesses. You don't want weaknesses on your dark squares. And yeah, what else would I do? Sometimes I play e5, sometimes I play e6 intending to go d5, sometimes I play c6 intending to go d5. I'm 
a chameleon against one c4 because it can lead to so many different openings and I try to choose one which my opponent doesn't like and which I do like. But yeah, g6, e6, I would not do. Memento M is saying, Hi Jan, what's your opinion on this line? By the way, we're two and a half hours in. I'm growing tired. I'm going to have to call it a day soon, but I'll take like three, four more questions, the ones I've seen in advance I'm trying to get through. Hi Jan, what's your opinion on this line? d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4. Ah, I should probably put it even on the screen. f3, c5, d5, b5, e4, castle. Lot of love for the for f3 Nemzo Indian today. I used to play bishop g5, but this line proved not being successful for me, and 7e5 looks too risky to my taste. Any help against this line with b5, which was recommended by GM Huschenbeet in a series? Thanks a lot. But once again, I can't help you. That's, that's the thing. If you decide on a very sharp setup like the 4f3 Nemzo, and then you say, I like the 4f3 Nemzo, but I just don't like the main line of it, then you can't do it. So my point is in this position after castles, as far as I know, e5 is the only good move everything else i would absolutely take black and you have to go for e5 pick up the gauntlet here if you want to play this position and i do agree this position is a huge mess and it's a pain and it's risky for both sides but that's what you signed up for by playing 4f3 which is a very interesting line and so is this position there's a lot of stuff still to be discovered here knight to f3 and it's chaos i Fully agree, it's risky for both sides, but it's also very risky for black. And if you're well prepared here, you can certainly hurt opponents. So, absolutely go for e5 in this position. There's just no other good move here. I think you're worse after any other move. So, even if I wanted to, I can't recommend anything else. Sorry there. And yeah, Niklas, he's a sharp, very dynamic, very concrete player. So, this fits his general style. But... A lot of guys will also be afraid to enter this with black if they're not super well prepared. And if they are, you have to be ready to meet that challenge. Go e5, knight e8, f4, and see what happens. It's the truth. I'm not trying to annoy you. I think I'm trying to annoy you guys, but I am trying to be give my honest chess opinions. Okay, last question. Those are the ones I have seen before the show. And we'll all call it a day and go to sleep, go to eat, go to... Play Banter Blitz, go become a premium member on Chess24, learn even more about chess. <laughs> Rambling. Ozeris. Oh, Hello, Jan. My question is regarding opening repertoire building. Ooh, that already starts like one of these general questions. I have seen it advised before by strong players that a good idea might be to find a player whose style you like and play the openings they did at some point in their careers. Um, yeah, I don't disagree with it. I would slightly alter it and I would say play the openings they play right now. Not so much at some point in their careers. Because normally yeah, you want to get inspiration by their recent games. And it's also much more likely they will be playing games in lines that are fashionable now. Well, if you chose a line they played 20 years ago, there's not going to be so much... Yeah, you can learn from it because nowadays your, opponent will, your opponents will choose different lines against that. And it's not going to help you so much. So, moving on. Yeah, overall, I think this is a fine idea. Also, whether you have done this in the past for your own repertoire. Not that much. Like my first chess book when I was, I think, around 10, 11, was called Kasparov's Schacheröffnungen, and Kasparov's Chess Openings. And I did follow that religiously for a year or two. It recommended 1d4 and gave you some sort of basic repertoire which I stuck to, and I'm very grateful there was main lines, so that has helped me until I started deviating. But after that, no, there's people I follow, like Kramnik, I've always followed his opening choices closely, Aronian with white, Anand, especially with black, and I will very often follow their lead, but I don't try to copy their whole repertoire, but it's more of a, yeah, fit or not approach for me. Anyway, I'm a fan of Gelfand, yeah, great theoretician, certainly also follow him. And I noticed that during late 90s to late 2000s he was playing Petrov or Nidorf versus 1e4 
and Nimzo with either Queen's Indian defense or Semislav or just the Semislav versus 1 d4. Do you think this repertoire is in good shape today? I was thinking of adopting it but replacing Berlov for Petrov for Berlin. Yeah, and that sort of proves, I think, or not proves, but goes along with what I said earlier. It's if you want to choose a hero and play their openings, choose the openings they're playing now or they're still playing because then, yeah, you're gonna get much more fresh material and relevant input. Like, yeah, with Gelfand, as you know, he gave up the Petrov and therefore, yeah, wouldn't be so helpful to follow him there. And if you're choosing the Berlin instead, you're kind of cheating because that's not what Gelfand plays, right? But of course, you could choose a different hero for your Berlin and only follow Gelfand in I don't know, the semi-slav. Um, but to answer the question, Gelfand, great theoretician, you can follow him pretty much anywhere. You can also just follow what he plays nowadays. What does he do? Neidorf and Grunfeld? What's not to like? Or Sveshnikov and Grunfeld? What's not to like? And do you think this Black Repertoire is in good shape today? Yeah, all of those are main openings. Neidorf, of course, is in good shape. Nemzo is also in great shape. Semislav, yeah, is still in good shape. A lot of work, that's the problem. That's also sometimes a problem with, yeah, following one of these heavy theoretical guys like Gelfand. It is a lot of work, but it tends to pay off. My ambitions are to reach IM strength someday. Do you think these black openings are good enough to get me there? Yeah, sure. I think any main openings will not stop you from getting to IM strength if you put in the time. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that was the answer you were looking for. You can certainly play the Berlin and the Semislav. I wouldn't play the Berlin every game if I was facing weaker opponents. Semislav I sort of did play every game for a long time. Don't do it anymore, but it's in decent shape as far as I know. And yeah, you can also choose the Night Orf. You can choose all of the main openings, really. But yeah, my piece of advice would be if you choose a hero, choose the openings he's playing now, not the openings he's played 20 years ago, because might be a reason and you're not gonna get that much input on it. So that concludes the show for today. Apologies to everyone I've ignored, either in the chat or who posted their questions too late to make the show. I've done two and a half hours. I can barely keep my eyes open but I do want to thank all you guys not only for the praise but also for contributing to the show and for becoming a premium member for asking smart questions even though I'm in a cranky mood I did enjoy a lot of the questions today and it also helps me to learn something new about chess every time so thanks for that and I will see you next time I'll probably see you tomorrow I think we have this GM banter brawl tournament which of course I'm planning to Get a good night's sleep and then crush everyone tomorrow. And see you then. In case you're not a premium member yet, now is the time. You can ask me smart questions. You can play in the tournament tomorrow. You can watch a lot of great video series. And so on and so forth. So it's a no-brainer. Price of a pizza for a month. I, yeah, I'm biased, but I think it's worth it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. Blah, blah.